If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Instead of just listening, you can also watch. See the Liberty Radio Network's key New Hampshire-based live shows via our studio cam at cam.lrn.fm. Plus, you'll still be able to listen to the Liberty Radio Network via the cam feed in high quality 24-7, even when there's no live show being produced in our keen studio. But wait, there's more. Our chat room is built into the cam page so you can interact with other listeners online. Listen, watch, and chat. All free at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. On LRN.FM, we talk a lot about alternative currencies. Did you know that now you can buy gold, silver, and other precious metals with bitcoins? LRN.FM has partnered with Amaji Metals to bring you great prices on beautiful 0.999 fine silver, as well as gold, platinum, and other metals. Check out their selection and pay with bitcoins or Federal Reserve notes at metal.lrn.fm. That's metal.lrn.fm. Lock it here for more live content. Free Talk Live is next on the Liberty Radio Network. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 31st, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,295, silver opened at $20.66, and Bitcoin is trading around $574. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Mention promo code Liberty and get 5% off all DVD and CD duplication jobs. Online, affordablesound.com. Or give them a call, 512-459-5253. In the news, the United Nations has accused Israel of seriously violating international law after it struck a school located within a refugee camp, killing at least 15 people, mostly women and children, as they slept. That word from a report published by The Guardian. The UN Secretary General said the attack, which left 100 more injured, was outrageous and unjustifiable, and demanded accountability and justice. The attack left 17 dead, including a journalist, according to Gaza health officials. On Tuesday, the United States and the European Union announced plans to inflict a new round of sanctions against Moscow. The broader sanctions include limiting access to EU capital markets for Russian state-owned financial institutions, imposing an embargo on arms trade, and reducing Russia's access to sensitive technologies, particularly in the oil sector. In a speech in front of the White House, Obama said the U.S. will block the exports of specific goods and technologies to the Russian energy sector. Albuquerque Police Department is considering scrapping use of its MRAP armored vehicle after opposition from the public and negative press attention that accused the country of turning into a militarized police state. The department acquired the military-style vehicle through the Department of Defense's 1033 program which allows law enforcement agencies to obtain war vehicles used to hunt insurgents in Iraq and Afghanistan. An ACLU report warned that such vehicles are part of militarized policing in which Americans are treated like wartime enemies. Support for Liberty Beat comes from The Corey Moore Show, live each Friday night at 9 o'clock Central Time. That's CoreyMooreShow.com. And support for Liberty Beat comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online at rrbi.co or by phone at 800-874-9760. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 31st, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. A Houston-based psychiatrist has been arrested and indicted for charges related to organizing a human trafficking organization. 
KLTV reports that Riaz Mascuri was arrested by the Gregg County Sheriff's Office and booked under a federal warrant. Mascuri and three other men stand accused of bringing female dancers from India and forcing them to dance for clients 12 to 14 hours a day, seven days a week. The group reportedly ran the operation in New York and other cities between 2008 and 2010. Now, court documents state the men would confiscate the victim's passports and keep them captive in hotels, threatening them with violence if they attempted to escape. Mascuri was released on a $300,000 bond and is scheduled to appear before a judge in a New York City federal court on August 1st. Biotech companies Monsanto, Dow Chemical, DuPont, and others have spent more than $80 million since 2012 towards fighting mandatory labeling of genetically modified foods. That's according to a report issued by the Environmental Working Group on Tuesday. Part of the campaign includes the launch of an interactive website called GMO Answers, a broad effort to win over consumers. Scott Faber, executive director of Just Label It, which supports mandatory GMO food labeling, said the industry is losing. The New York Post has reported that more than 2,500 9-11 first responders have been diagnosed with cancer. New data from Mount Sinai Hospital's World Trade Center Health Program reveals a rise in cancer rates, including 1,655 rescue workers. When combined with firefighters and EMTs with cancer related to 9-11 cleanup, the total comes to 2,518. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It, live Sunday afternoons at 4 o'clock on 1370 a.m. in Austin. That's 1370 a.m. on Sundays at 4. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Online, CaboBob's.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 31st, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Hello, this is anchor Doyle Redland. I have just been informed that my 40-year contract with the Onion Radio News expired two minutes ago. A brief extension has been added to my contract to allow me to say goodbye to you, my faceless listeners. I've been reading the news out loud on the air for a very long time now, and the words to describe my feelings are difficult to find. Steve, what are you doing? This, this is my big moment. I'm getting the word now that you have to leave the studio right now. But where will I go? Now. Well, uh, goodbye, everyone. I'm just coming back for my hat. Uh, no, it's it's my hat. I just, I just need it and I'll go. There's no need to get pushy. Moose! Rocco, I thought we were friends! This is Free Talk Live. It's the show where you control the calls. You can give us one at... 800 for uh 855 450 free that's 855 uh 450-3733. Get and, in the groove there, buddy. <laughs> hey, gotta get in the groove there. Ah, first time behind being in the first chair for what, a year? <laughs> it's been like a year since you've got to yeah, sit in the first like chair. something like that. Yeah. This is why I want to do this, so that I can get into practice and have a high energy intro. And tonight, it's not Brian and Stephanie here with mm-hmm. you, because they are off doing other things. So filling in, it's Johnson. And Danica. And Mark. And... We are here to bring you interesting content unless you feel like calling in and taking control of the show. So until that happens, uh, Danica, you have something to talk to us about tonight. Before we go any further, though, we haven't had an introduction for Danica because I don't think she's been on Free Talk Live proper at this point. Is that correct? That's correct. She's been on one after show. An after show. It was okay. a very fun after show. So um, a lot of people who listen to sort of the regular program won't know who Danica is. And Danica, give us a brief rundown. Sure, absolutely. Uh, I am a recent college graduate. I moved up here for the Free State Project about late May. Uh, so I've been here for a couple of months. I've been to New Hampshire several times before. So I am very happy to be here and the uh, in the Granite State and happy to be on the show. This is my first time being on, well... Again, proper being on Free Talk Live. I've done a couple of smaller podcasts, but nothing like Free Talk Live. So I am a little nervous, but I'm more excited than nervous. So thank you very much for having me on. Absolutely. And we're going to throw you right into the mix with uh, you've, you've got the best story of all of us. So <laughs> tell me about uh, 
a cigarette, uh, excuse me, a soda ban? Yeah, uh, not quite a soda ban. Okay. Uh, so if there's any reason, you know, again, for anyone that wants to possibly leave the state of Connecticut, uh, the Democrat, a Democrat is seeking a national soda tax. Yeah, I don't um, know that's going to change the, you know, where you live though, because this is a, just because rep, this representative from from Connecticut um, happens to be from Connecticut doesn't matter whether they're Connecticut or Georgia. They're going to put it on all of us. No, that's true. And this is actually a funny story because a couple of us went out to uh, eat the other night, and uh, some of us were complaining about how high the soda and the iced tea and whatever beverages. Isn't it were. crazy? Yeah, I, mean, I remember when a, a fountain drink was like eighty five cents. You got a fountain drink for eighty five cents, mm-hmm. but now when you go out, yeah, you get unlimited refills, but it's two fifty. Yeah, two fifty. You know, have, have you noticed that a lot of places aren't giving the the free refills anymore, and they're, mm-hmm. they're being sneaky about it too? Some places you go in, and it's just you order a drink, and the drink is like two fifty, and yet they're still not giving you free refills. No, I haven't had that happen to me. I think I would be outraged. But the I, most frustrating part about that is that they don't tell you that they don't have free refills they just keep filling filling and before you know it you've got five charges of 250 on your bill this isn't a margarita you can't do that Mm-mm, no <laughs> no this is just like plain soda or iced tea or something but anyway to get into the story uh so representative rosa deloro of connecticut is seeking a national soda tax oh connecticut what a surprise that's what i was saying connecticut <laughs> another home, reason to leave state? connecticut yeah johnson connecticut and new york are kind of like the fascist Hubs of the United States. Communist New York. <laughs> okay, so anyway, seeking a national soda tax, an effort backed by leaders of the movement to ban smoking indoors and others who call carbonated beverages toxic. Delo- well, I mean, I think that it's, it would be difficult to, to argue that, um, that, you know, so, so that sugar isn't, you know, especially in excess, isn't poisonous. I mean, you know, it's terrible for us, but... I don't think that anyone else needs to make that decision but you and I, right? right. Alcohol oh, I is agree. also a toxin. You know? Indeed it is. But then again, they are taxing that already, so that's not necessarily the best argument. But, um, the, you know... The only way they were able to pull that off, the tax, though, is because of prohibition. Right. Because they were able to prohibit it, then when they brought it back, they could bring it back with this large tax. Right. So, with that being said, how many teaspoons of sweetener in soda or energy drinks do you do you folks think that are in, say... A average soda can. What okay. is it, like 18, 22, something I like can't, that? It can't be that much. Um, oh, yeah. A can, of, a can of Coke is about 180 calories. Um, I would guess a teaspoon of sugar is probably about 50 calories. So I'm going to say somewhere in the neighborhood of three. Okay. They want to impose a one cent a one cent excise tax per teaspoon of calorie sweetener in soda, energy drinks, sports drinks, and sweet teas. So, that's, so that means that Diet Coke is cool because there's no sweetener in it. Oh, there's still sweetener in okay. Diet Coke. <clears throat> a 12-ounce can of regular Coke contains 39 grams of total sugar, which is about nine and one-third teaspoons of sugar. Holy I macaroni. I was closer than you. <laughs> so depending on the size of the soda, you could be looking at anywhere from 10 cents to 20 cents, even more. Okay. That's a, that's a sizable tax. Yeah. And... I, this is another situation probably where you're going to hit the poor harder than you hit the rich. I would guess that, that you're talking about rich people be more likely to carry around their bottles of uh, you know, purified water from some uh, foreign country and that poor people are more likely to drink uh, sodas. It's also going to be interesting because what it's going to it's going to shift people over to diet maybe maybe shift some people over to, to more into diet colas because the diet colas are suddenly going to be cheaper, which is would be strange. And then you start getting the Increased effects of all these um, artificial sweeteners, which would be kind of interesting. Yes, the tax is targeted at Americans who are low income, African American, Hispanic, and children, which the legislation calls priority populations due to higher rates of obesity and diabetes. See, these taxes are insidious because they sort of work either way. So they, about the beginning of the, I can't remember when it was, maybe it's been 2008 or something like that. I I can't remember exactly, but the Obama administration brought a tax, uh, got through a tax on cigars and like uh, loose leaf tobacco or something like that. Oh yeah, that's right. Right at the beginning of his administration. And they also banned like certain flavored tobaccos, which was, Mm -hmm. they had to like rebrand cloves. I remember that because they were, there was like a ban on cloves and like, you couldn't have like cherry or vanilla tobacco or something like that because they were 
basically accusing them of marketing that to kids. And when that happened, when the cigar um, tax came down, I decided I was going to quit smoking cigars because I wasn't going to pay. I understand that money's fungible, and even though they say the money's going to go to education, that doesn't mean the money's going to go to education. It just means that some the money from the tax will go to education. The money that would have gone to education will now go to bullets to kill people in foreign countries. So um, I can't, in good conscience, smoke my cigars that are going to buy bullets to kill people. Right. And I stopped. But that was really sort of the purpose of the the tax to some extent anyway, because either way they win. Oh, now you've stopped doing the bad thing we don't like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's this back and forth thing. Don't worry, it's coming to e-cigarettes too. Well, what's kind of interesting, I think New Hampshire actually has laws that make it legal to grow tobacco for personal use. I think that's fine, but it's about the hardest thing to grow. <laughs> I mean, so you, yes, growing it's easy. It's curing it and drying right. it, which is really quite a, ch- a chore. It's a challenge. Well, I know someone who's in the area who is uh, going to be attempting to take up that challenge. So it would be interesting. To see I am very interested fares. in hearing about it. Yeah. Do you want to know something interesting about the revenue of this tax is going to be going to Obamacare? Well, of course it is. Really? It's got to go yep. through something good. Wow. It's going to the uh, the fund cut that was done by pro- by well, Congress. This is, of course, the natural progression of things. Once you put in a law that right. says we all have to pay for each other's health care, and essentially that's what it says when it doesn't matter whether it's a private or private organizations that are paying for health care or whether it's a single payer government organization doing it. Once you force everyone to get into the insurance system, then you're going to have everybody caring about what else everybody else does. Right. Because it drives up everybody else's rates. Right. Now, what you eat. that's what a lot of people want. A lot, a lot that's of what they want. That's what they want. Huge social pressure to stop doing the things that we think are bad. Now, consider for a second that we don't know. When, when I was growing up, margarine was a good thing to eat and mm-hmm. eggs were a bad thing to eat. Mm-hmm. How are that? Now, eggs are a good thing to eat and margarine's a terrible thing to eat. Right. And- Back Some, the way it used to be. <laughs> somewhere in the 90s, there was the eat all the carbs you want, just don't eat any, um, not trans fats, uh, uh, saturated fats. Well, Meat. they need people to be unhealthy so that they can charge them to try and make them healthy again and spend lots and lots of money reversing the health trends that they, you know, uh, convinced people to make themselves ridiculously un- unhealthy with. Well, I don't know what their reasoning behind this is. I would suspect that they are incompetent boobs that do not understand the uh, <laughs> the world around them and that uh, that fa- diets tend to be fad-oriented, not uh, science-oriented. Right. And I don't think we have yet figured out what the most scientifically good diet is for human beings, but I do think that it's it, it, we're best getting keeping the government out of it. I completely agree. Uh, I definitely think we need to keep the government out of all health care as much as possible. Uh, if you want to talk to us about health care, give us a call. Uh, 855-453. This is the Sunday edition of Free Talk Live. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, health care, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy 
buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm I'm, I'm comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Who do you think you Excuse lost? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is... You ain't gonna make it. Wait a minute. 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 Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared of me. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 357 this is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is the Free Talk Live Sunday Night Edition Again, letting you know, Brian and Stephanie are not in tonight, but Mark is still here, and also filling in uh, tonight is, is Johnson. Danica. And Danica. Because <laughs> I already said Mark's here, so. I wasn't sure what to do there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making things all confusing for you guys. Sorry. So, you know, uh, some people out there who are listening may not know that Free Talk Live has a newsletter. And you can subscribe to it on the website and you can get emailed weekly digest updates. Or if that doesn't work for you and you want to find out more about the show, you can go to the Free Talk Live Facebook page or Google Plus or you can subscribe to the Twitter account and you can get updated with all the happenings and goings on with the show. But for now, what we're talking about here is soda taxes. And well, I mean, it's, is it really a soda tax or is it more of a sugar tax? It appears to be, well, I mean, it's a sweetener tax. So yes. Sweeteners Is include... it all sweeteners or is it just sugar? Is it cal- caloric sweeteners? Because it didn't seem like they were going to be taxing um, non-caloric, like, you know, like aspartame, Splenda, well, that kind of It's the stuff. quantity by measurement as far as size measurement, I guess, weight well, teaspoon. Teaspoon is a size measurement. So, right. um, you know, cubic inch, a cubic centimeter. But is it sweeteners in general? Is it all sweeteners? It says it's the Sugar Sweetened Beverages Tax Act. Sugar. Call, sugar also beverage. known as the Sweet Act. Right, but it okay. has to be sugar sweetened. Is that right? Best, yes. Okay. That's correct. Oh, I'm going to love watching the sugar farmers go nuts on this one. That's going to be really interesting. Yeah, I can't it, imagine it, Now it's specifically a farmer thing. That's specifically. Yes. You hate farmers. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, so that'll be interesting. Um, so, I mean, is that all we have to say about that? I mean, is there anything else that we want to 
talk about it on the, the sugar tax. Or... Well, we've already talked that it's going to be targeted at Americans who are low income. Uh, also, African- they, they actually say that? Yeah, it says right here in the article. The tax is targeted at Americans who are low income, African American, Hispanic, and children, which the legislation calls priority populations due to higher rates of obesity and diabetes. Revenue. It's, I, 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 this is amazing. So first, they go after the uh, the farmers um, and the, the cane, sugar cane farmers, right? And of course, uh, high fructose corn syrup. Wait a second, high fructose corn syrup is that a sugar? Because most sodas are sweetened with that. And oh, you got a really good point there. Uh, so I'm not even sure what we're talking about at this point. Oh, you get a really good point there because actually I've seen some sodas lately have been trying to go back to actual sugar or sucralose or anything other than high fructose corn syrup. But just well, sucralose though is not a high caloric sugar. I mean, you're correct. It but is sucralose your... is based off of sugar, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, it says here that it's per teaspoon of caloric sweetener. So. Uh, sucralose, okay. yes, is zero calories, but sugar is not. High fructose corn syrup is not. Caloric sweetener, okay. right? Very interesting. Okay, so um, yeah, it's going to go after you know the 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 corn farmers, the sugar cane farmers, uh, and and poor people. They really right. just lay it right out, and specifically African Americans. Right. Nice. So it's intended to discourage excessive consumption of sugar sweetened beverages by increasing the price. So that two fifty soda that you pay at Applebee's. Probably going to go up to I what two seventy five. Taxing these these lawmakers by the word. <laughs> I think we really need to ex, uh, we need to encourage them to stop passing excessive laws. You know, you see, they really seem to be addicted to these these high word count laws that no one wants to read, including themselves. You know, I, I think that there's, well, if we're going to, uh, you know, bring out government solutions for this, uh, I, I think that it really comes down to the Constitution's, um, what I consider the main flaw of the Constitution. The main flaw of the Constitution is is that you have a panel of judges, the Supreme Court, that decide on the veracity of something at the end. Now, this is what they call appellate jurisdiction. It's, um, you know, wasn't, it wasn't actually specifically stated in the Constitution, but it's there and the Supreme Court exists. Um, the fact is, though, that th- if if somebody's fined, some, if, if somebody's being taxed, it's essentially a fine. So the um, fact is, is that you have to, um, I think this, the Supreme Court should have to be a 9-0 ruling. Shouldn't at least, shouldn't it be a unanimous vote of the highest legal minds in the land rather than a situation where it's a 5-4 split. Why is it democratic when we're talking about the law? When I'm being convicted of something, uh, at least from a, a criminal standpoint, it's 9-0. Or at least, the, you know, the, the jury has to agree unanimously. Why shouldn't the best legal minds in America, as they as we should believe, um, why shouldn't they have to unanimously decide that something is constitutional for it to be constitutional? But Democrats have also, uh, this isn't the first time that they've tried to do some sort of restriction on soda. Oh, this isn't going anywhere. No, it's not. (laughs) I mean, California proposed adding a warning label to soda. Uh, A penny per ounce tax was voted down in Chicago. And then also former New York City Michael Bloomberg tried to get like large sodas banned and that didn't fall through. So, I mean, I don't know if this is, I don't think this is going to go anywhere, but yeah, they're trying, they're trying to attack soda and other sweeteners has tried a way to cut down on obesity because obviously obesity is a, a, a huge problem. I think that they need to do what they've, um, they were very successful. Um, I don't mean Democrats, but people politically were successful in getting kids to stop smoking cigarettes. They made it not cool to smoke cigarettes. I can say that it was still in the late eighties. There was a little bit of cool factor to smoking cigarettes. Now, I don't think there is. I don't know. I know a ton of kids who who grew up, started smoking, and especially started picking up and going to the hookah bars. The hookah bars became a big thing. A hookah oh, yeah. bar, but hookahs aren't really addictive in the same way. You're not talking about mm, cigarettes. And still tobacco smoke, and I think it probably leverages into more wanting more different forms of tobacco smoke. I, I well, okay. I'm um, hookah bars. I'm I'm going to put in a different category, but fine. I sure. mean, you know, I. The c- cigarettes themselves are designed and they have additives to make it even more addictive mm-hmm. for you. And I think that that, um, you know, it's insidious. And so and p- plus, y- y- you know, you you generally don't see somebody carrying around a hookah hitting that thing all day, um, whereas cigarettes are intended for you to be very, very convenient for you. Right. So if they can make sugar not as cool as it used to be, 
they might have some success around it. That's what I think they, they need to do. They're probably going to make an e-cigarette where it delivers sugar directly into your lungs. It's probably <laughs> the next thing that they'll do. <laughs> Well, so Some scientists will figure it out. So many restaurants have already put in the amount of calories per every drink or every food item. I mean, is that, I guess that's not doing what it's supposed to do because they're still imposing some sort of, you know. Yeah, I don't think people, I, I you know, it, it, yes, it's clearly not working. I don't know what um, one has to do. I do think that we have a real problem in this country with, uh, you know, simple sugars and the consumption thereof, but I wouldn't. For a second, tell somebody they couldn't do it. I just think that right. people need to be educated. I think they need yeah. to be clear on it. And I don't think the average person is educated on the dangers of what they eat. I don't think they care. I wonder, uh, you know, it seems like a lot of this stuff, we were mentioning it, how it kind of seems cyclical, where you have, you switch from the eggs and the margarine uh, being, uh, or one being healthy, the other one not being healthy, and then it switches to uh, the other, you know, completely reverses where the one is healthy and then the other one's not healthy, and then it switched back, right? So what I'm wondering is now we kind of have the era of the internet. Is this stuff ever going to switch back again? Is it? Are we going to ever get that reversal again, or are people finally going to figure out what's actually correct and keep that in their mind for a long time now? You know, is it, is is the correct information going to stick around this time? Good question. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Never, ever send a follow-up email asking, did you get my email? Email 101, if it didn't bounce back undeliverable, it got where you sent it. And avoid transmedia pestering, like calling to ask, did you get my email? Or emailing to say, I left you a voicemail. If your emails and voicemails aren't being acknowledged, your problem isn't technology, it's technique. Is your message concise and understandable? Have you boiled it down to seem as relevant as possible to the recipient? In other words, is it the opposite of spam or junk mail? All of this really matters if you're a job seeker. But even if you're not, with money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. Wait till you hear the least popular girl's name in 2004. We'll start with Rack. 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 <laughs> Crumpet. Crumpet. Well, Crumpet's got a funny. Someone named their little girl Willie. Willie. 
Cannel- cannelloni. Can- cannelloni. Cannelloni. Lasagna. Mmm. Tasty. <laughs> <laughs> and Biff. <laughs> yeah, Biff. The These least popular name. <laughs> <laughs> the, the least popular name. These are all made up, folks. Do I don't not care. believe this nonsense. This is not news. I don't care. <laughs> I haven't laughed this much all week. <laughs> oh. This may be my favorite. Rumpy Pumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Now, how could you pick that one up? I mean, if you were faking this list, I could understand that you could fake Donald Duck or Scrooge or, or Pork. But how do you think Rumpy of Rumpy Pumpy? Pumpy. Rumpy Pumpy. R-U-M-P-E-P-U-M-P-E-E. Rumpy Pumpy. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. It is the Sunday night edition of Free Talk Live, and you're listening with Johnson and Danica and Mark, and we are here tonight to bring all the news to you and to talk to you about whatever you want to talk about. Um, But first, Mark, I believe you want to tell us a little something about ProXPN. Well, yeah, ProXPN is a a VPN service. That's a, um, what, what does that stand for? Um, well, Police I know VPN network? stands for Virtual Private Network. Yeah, so XPN, I believe, is the next level. Extreme, like extreme private, private network. Extreme. I'm, not, I'm not sure. Extreme, ladies and gentlemen. So if um, this is the way that uh, it, it sort of confuses those on the internet where you are and what you're saying. So your ISP or anybody who can get access to um, your sort of the, you know, whatever's going out of your computer, whether it's through the Wi-Fi or through a router or whatever way they can do it, they have, you know, they, they can look at everything that, that you're doing online. Your ISP, that's your internet service provider, whether it's Time Warner or Comcast or whomever it is, is storing all the information about where you go. And they'll give it to anybody who has a warrant or anybody who can hack in and get it. And not that they'll give it to them, but they'll just take it. That's a little disturbing. And we know that at this point, the United States government, a la the NSA, can't be trusted with our right. information. You can't even, you're not even safe on tour anymore. Yeah, yeah, tours has been compromised, apparently, as the claim. And it's been sort of the claim for a couple of years now. Um, I, you know, I didn't believe it, but I'm beginning to believe it now. Yeah. <laughs> so what uh, what a VPN does and what ProXPN does is, is that they they make a uh, encrypted pathway from your computer to their server and wherever their server is. They've got ones all over the world: Singapore, Netherlands, Texas. California, New York, and then you're com- essentially you're coming out of you're springing out of their their service there, and then going to your websites and stuff like that. And it keeps you you know relatively safe. It's available for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Linux, whatever it is you need. And one account works with all your devices, so you don't need to have um, separate accounts for each device. You go to proxpncom FTL, use promo code FTL20, and get 20% off. That's FTL is in free talk live 20 is in 20 percent off of their premium account when you get the annual plan that adds up to only five dollars a month really it's an insignificant amount for your internet safety because all you need to do is have your bank account compromised one time by some hexor out there and you'll think oh hey, that was a good investment this is simply insurance for being on the internet and I think this works out, Mark, because ProXPN, they're also, I believe, they're the sponsor of the phone lines, correct? That's correct. Well, I just bring that up because I want to just make a horrible segue to the fact that we have a phone call. We'll go to <laughs> ProXPN.com slash FTL, and you can use Bitcoin. FTL20 is Fantastic. the coupon code. So I'm going to go to this call. It's actually, uh, it's actually a Skype call, and we have on Raphael from the Washington, D.C. area, and uh, he wants to talk to us tonight about is- the Israel and Gaza situation. Hey, so guys, go- good evening. Hey, Raphael. Go ahead with your thoughts. So I heard the other night uh, on the podcast, I heard you talking about uh, Israel-Gaza situation. I just wanted to, to weigh in on it. Um, you know, we 
we could discuss the whole politics and everything like that. I, you know, I don't know if the radio is such a good forum in a few minutes to do that, but I did want to. It's a really just, long, complicated, yeah, right, you know, right, thing, and right. it's easy to get on one side or the other. You know, they did this, and that's bad. <laughs> Absolutely. So, 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 what I'd like to do is maybe just give some insights, a, a, a little bit of um, preface. Uh, I'm a Free State Project participant. I use bitcoins, own bitcoins. I drink Buzzbox coffee every day. We're not going to be nice to you just because of all this. You know? No, but 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 I just want to establish a little bit of you know before people start labeling me a neocon or whatever. I, I did want to just throw that out there. But in this situation, I also served in the Israel Defense Force okay. um, several years ago. Um, I was obviously not in this conflict in Gaza, but in 2008, 2009, which was a little bit shorter but similar, rocket launches, uh, a soldier abducted terror tunnels, smuggling, you know, weapons from Egypt. Let me ask um, you about these rockets. Yes. So they've, um, we, we hear things about these Palestinian rockets and rocket sounds terrible, right? Like it sounds big and massive. And then we hear that they're essentially bottle rockets or something slightly larger than that. Can you tell us in your world words, what you think about these rockets? Yes. So they are rockets. Well, they're, okay, there are two. There are these kind of homegrown ones that they take cement that was intended for building houses and infrastructure. That's why they that's can't have the cement. Reason. Right. And, and and they make them. And those are ones that they're short range. So they can they're kind of like like you you'd build your own rocket like they can shoot them really high up in the air and then they launch like four kilometers, you know, east of where you where you shot them. Right. Okay. And they can do damage. They fall on your car, you know, uh, your porch. You're dead. Right. Uh, if they fell on someone's home and the home's there, they're not usually made out of wood. They're made out of some kind of rock. So probably you're OK, even if you're not in a bomb shelter, but dangerous nonetheless. And, you know, you got your kids in the playground. You're going to put them in the bomb shelter. So it's right? essentially like a rocket powered trebuchet. I mean, it's like they can do the same thing if yes. they had a catapult. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that's fair. And, and those are difficult to shoot down by Israel because this Iron Dome and Patriot missiles, really the Iron Dome, you really don't have a lot of time to react. I mean, it doesn't right. have like a heat signal that much and it just so up and down. And it's like, like you said, it's like throwing a rock. It's throwing having, big rocks. <laughs> throwing a big rock. Dangerous. But but you're right. But now but how now, many now, casual, say, how many dead but, people have occurred from these uh, these big rocks? Can't so, be very many. I, I, I'll tell you, I don't know the exact number, but it's not very many. However, that's what those are the short range. They're not even rocket. They're like mortars. They're right. like tank, whatever. But. There are medium and long range rockets that come from Iran. There, some of them are Soviet made, and those are also smuggled in mainly through Egypt. Um, sometimes they've had things where they find them uh, like having a fishing boat that kind of, you know, just drops off these bags and they send divers to go and bring them. Sure. And those are, I mean, I'm not saying they're the most high tech, you know, US rockets in the world, but those are legit Iranian Russian you. missiles. So and, you know, just like a Kalashnikov might not be as good as an M16, but, you know, it's pretty darn close. What's the percentage of, of you know, when these rockets are, is it 100 to 1, 100 flying rocks to every really awesome rocket they've got there? I mean, you know, as far as I'm concerned, these are top of the line. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be U.S. made for me. I'm going to go um, out on a limb and say maybe it's one, one like, Iranian like rocket to 10 mortars okay. or something. But I don't know. And I bet you could probably find that out just from statistics. I mean, I don't think anyone's trying to hide that info. Okay. But, but, you know, and then when, you know, in the past when uh, Lebanon has shot from, you know, from the North, those are always the rocket rockets. From sure Hezbollah and, and, and North Korea, they come from. So, you know, that's just kind of a distinction. Um, so it is a real threat. Um, and I wanted to also clarify having been in Gaza, uh, that every soldier that, you know, every time they go to a house and maybe, you know, five, if five civilians die, I really believe from my vantage point, having been on the ground and lived in the country, that Israel does try everything they can to mitigate that. Um, I also will tell you that every single one of those, we could have bombed it with an airplane or, or a helicopter. And the only reason the soldiers even went there is so that it's five civilians and not 50 civilians. Um, I also have seen, and, and they have it on the news, uh, that they are the the Hamas is storing the missiles and grenade launchers and everything in the schools in the UN buildings, um, you know, in the mosques, in the hospitals. The the headquarters of Hamas is actually in the basement right now of one of the main hospitals in Gaza. Well, now let me I, ask you I, this. So um, the here's what I'm thinking. If I'm running the uh, I, I don't know the the Quaker school in Ramallah, right? Um, I'm thinking. I'm not going to let Hamas put any of their stuff in my school because I might become a target. 
Well, yeah, but it's all corrupt there. I mean, I mean, for instance, you know, the the UNRWA, I believe it's the it's the relief organization of the UN. The one in, for the Palestinians is the largest in the world, more than the Rwandan one, more than the you know all these other ones that they have. But it's tons of corruption, and the people there very much do. So. I, you know, I'm not saying everybody, but there's several people, let's say, working there that are UN employees that definitely are actively trying to hide it. And and every time they find those rockets, they give them back. But um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of specifics that we can talk about, but I just really honestly can tell you that I think that Israel and the army is trying to be as humane as possible. If we could dismantle all the governments, we'd be better off. I'm totally with you. But Do you want to hold the line and, and talk to us a little bit more about yeah, this? Sure, why not? Sure. Okay, fantastic. So you're listening to Free Talk Live. Give us a call, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Crashed, The Death of the Dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones adds, This is an excellent book. It is also a little scary because it could very well be true. I hope it's fiction, and Julia Moffat calls it a gripping read and the most exciting and insightful book this year. Crashed is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its Amazon reviewers calling for a sequel. This book is totally worth your time. It's well-researched, liberty-oriented, realistic, gripping, and gritty. Do yourself a favor and don't miss this one. Get your copy at Amazon. Crashed, The Death of the Dollar by William Cooper. Hey, folks, this is Larry Crisp for BabyBoomerBackupPlan.com. I'm sure you know this economy sucks. We all realize that the American economy is tremendously unstable right now and will likely get much worse. There's monumental debt, government bailouts, stock and real estate bubbles that are primed to pop at any moment, which can flush away most or all of your retirement savings. This type of movement has enormous consequences. Virtually zero sectors of the economy are hiring and workforce participation is at record lows. Financial trouble is right here at our doorstep. But if you move right now and develop a backup plan immediately, this could be the most profitable time of your life. Proportionately, more millionaires were created during the Great Depression than at any time in our history. Get my free report at babyboomerbackupplan.com or call 888-507-8789 for my free report. 888-507-8789 and prepare to profit as history repeats itself. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kid's education, my money my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis, battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. 
When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. It is the Sunday night edition of Free Talk Live. We are here talking to you right now about Israel and Gaza, and we have talked a little bit here about the new sugar tax that they're trying to uh, promote here out of Connecticut, and um, we're going to get right back to it, but first... Well, I want to tell you about modup.net. If you're looking uh, to increase your focus, if you're feeling fatigued, trying to get that extra edge when it counts... Look into Modafinil. It has to be better than coffee, that right? Extra edge. <laughs> that extra edge. <laughs> er, I wish I could get rid of that name. I chose it years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so that you can get things done. Businessmen around the world continue to talk about how Modafinil is, um, from modup.net is making a difference in their work and giving them the critical edge that they need. They make it affordable for everyone to take advantage of the benefits of Modafinil by being 80 to 85% lower than the brand name. But don't mistake low prices for an inferior quality. They ensure that purity and potency are consistent with that of the branded version. Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio program, and modup.net ships worldwide. So it's your responsibility to know whatever your bureaucrats think you need to do in order to get whatever it is that they get. So check into it. Uh, but modup.net is a supporter of the Bitcoin community, and you can order from modup.net with Bitcoin and get an additional discount, 33% off. And to make the deal even sweeter, use code FTL. You'll get 10 free tablets with your order. So Coupon code FTL, use Bitcoin, look into it for yourself, but uh, be sure, um, we're, sh you'll, we're sure that you'll find modup.net offers world-class service at a great price. It's modup.net. Okay, so this is the show about your cause, so we're going to go right back to them, back to the phones, back to the fantastic. So here we have Raphael talking to us again about uh, Israel and Gaza, and we're getting some sort of firsthand information from you, Raphael, as you served in the Israeli Defense Force, uh, you said how long ago? Um, uh, let's say about eight, uh, six to eight years ago. Six yeah. to eight years ago. Okay. So, I mean, you mentioned there are tunnel networks, there are these uh, rocket propelled, basically cement bombs, just <laughs> giant rocks that they're just launching across the border. Yeah, I always um, wondered why it was that they weren't allowing cement to go into Gaza, um, and I guess the reason is is because they'll, in some cases, turn them into uh, uh, big rocks that they throw at people. Sure, and look at, the, look at the tunnels that they build. I mean, you can see pictures and videos on YouTube and, you know, Google. It's the amount of tunnels that, you know, go imagine going 20 meters underground and building a tunnel that's like four or five kilometers long goes from the heart of Gaza all the way into the heart of an Israeli city or, you know, that area. Do you know how many houses and hospitals and schools you could build with that cement? I mean, we're talking like millions of dollars per tunnel. And they don't let's not even get into the fact that they use, you know, child labor because they're so small there. But, you know, like I don't really want to debate the whole issue. Um, you know, the whole politics, if I could press a button, like I said, I'm a libertarian guy. If I could press a button and all the foreign aid, dismantle all the governments on both sides, you know, I think people would be better off. How would that so, work, though? This is the really the, the problem is, is the reason that there is an Israeli state is because, um, you know, it was sort of carved out of the map. And, you know, this is where the Jews got to go. In my opinion, it would have been far better off if Western countries would have just said, hey, Jews, come here. Please come here. But um, instead they decided, you know, let's take this little section of the map and we'll make well, Jesus and, come back or whatever. Yeah, exactly. But that's how do my, you undo this? That's my whole problem with the whole thing is that I think that, they, you know, both sides have chosen this particular piece of land because it's magical. Mm -hmm. It's magic. Mm -hmm. We need well, to have this particular piece of land because. Well, now they bought it, though. Like yeah. if I have a house that's well, in yeah, exactly. um, Haifa. 
Yeah. Like, I don't want to, I'm not going to sell, what, what? Yeah, <laughs> now yeah, I've yeah. got to move to New York City? <laughs> I got to go to, I got to go to well, LA? I got to go to London? Look, no. A, a, a big, a big part of it, you know, they're, they're, they were talking about historically starting a Jewish state in Uganda. You got to see, this is all happen, happening out of, after World War II, after the Holocaust, with all the people that were exterminated there. And one of the, the reasons that they wanted to have a Jewish state and not just absorb the people into the U.S. and, and Europe, which was, was an issue in and of itself, but there is the idea that throughout history, Jews have been persecuted and slaughtered, just like many other people. And having a state with the military, you know, is a way that, you know, like, for instance, I'll give you an example. When, when uh, the Ethi you know, Ethiopian Jews were being, uh, uh, you know, in bad conditions there, mm -hmm. Israel saved hundreds of thousands. They sent the military in. I mean, they weren't fighting people, but they were sending like cargo planes to pick up. I don't know if it was tens or hundreds of thousands of Ethiopian immigrants. And when the Soviet Union collapsed... They brought, I believe it was almost a million or so Jews from that area. So, you know, I know but it's a now they political, have to settle but, them somewhere. And, well, uh, and, 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 and now as a result, Israel has the highest per capita um, per, uh, rate of uh, engineers and scientists in the entire world. So from the Soviet Union. Well, yeah, so, it's, um, it's an amazing know, I'm thing just saying to that see. There is an argument to, to be made that, that, that just absorbing them into other places peacefully might not solve the problem because there is a history of uh, thousands of years of Jews not being able to defend themselves and every time they get slaughtered. So, um, But it hasn't happened in England, and it hasn't happened in the United States. And it... Like, I'm well, just thinking... it, had, it hadn't happened in Germany. Look, before the Nazis came in, Germany was one of the... You know, it was a democracy. It was cultured, you know, technology. Jews were very successful there. So, look, they're, you know, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to argue for, for the government, the Jewish yeah. gov Israeli government or the U.S. government, but, but if you do... T you know, it's, I agree with you, Mark, what you said is, you know, World War II maybe had to have, you and Ian sometimes get at it. World War II maybe, I believe, had to happen. But if World War I had never happened, then maybe World War II would never have happened. And I'm totally with you. Well, I think the Pacific so it's Theater the same, was unavoidable. It's the same kind of thing. I mean, if the Holocaust wouldn't have happened, yeah, you know what? You don't need a Jewish state. But once you have that happen... What are you going to just take well, another chance like that? The Holocaust was just the best bog, um, the best broadcast pogrom. Um, I mean, it it had gone on before. There's sure. no doubt. Um, sure. You know, and very and few more people, people died. More people died in China, and more people died in a lot of other uh, atrocities. So, yeah, um, indeed. But but I would say that that the, the the Jews do have a bit of a unique situation in the sense that when they live in Babylon or Egypt, you know, they get persecuted and killed and enslaved. They go to Europe, Germany, same thing happens. So it, it, it's isn't it's a it very... assimilation though? I mean, there are a lot of cultures out there. You're not finding the Ostrogoths and the Visigoths had it really tough, um, you know, as far as assimilation went too. But nobody even knows where those people are at this point. Like to some extent, it's because um, of this. One thing we can find with like Jews and Greeks um, here in the United States is that they don't want to date outside of uh, you know ethnicity, and it's because they have this you know thousands of years. Uh, at least with uh, Jews, they've got this thousands of years of thing behind it it's like uh 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 you got to stay with Jews cuz that's better and if if it was just assimilated wouldn't it wouldn't it be better for everybody well i think plenty of Jews are assimilating Lots but i'm not are. really i'm not really you know i'm not even such a religious person i don't even want to go down that line I, my my whole point in calling was just saying it's not as immoral as a lot of the people in the liberty community think i think people get confused they see free gaza free palestine and they think it's free you know it's like occupy Whoa. or some freedom issue I and, kind of feel like, I, I, you know, it's, again, I have this whole feeling of immorality on both sides because of, you know, uses of eminent domain, people, you know, just trying to fight over this chunk of land because originally, you know, some folks thought that it's magic. And you know, so I kind of, you well, know, I, I, kinda, I don't see morality coming out of either side well, of this issue. But, but the, the morality part. in the sense where they say, well, how many civilians were killed on this side? How many civilians right. were killed on that side? I don't think that those arguments have weight. Um, I think. Why is that? You know, because at this point, like, I think well, it's like well, six 20, times the six times the uh, Palestinians have been killed as all Jews in, in, in the last okay. uh, several so weeks. In World as, War II, 20 times more Germans were killed. German civilians were killed than Allied civilians or British civilians or something like that. So, you know. I just don't think that that carries weight. I, I, I do really feel terrible for all the people that are dying. I know it, you know, it sounds cliched, but but re I really do, and I believe that Israel Israel does, and I really even believe that the Israeli government's government does. And I agree with your definition of government. It's the most successful criminal gang in any given territory. You know, dismantle them all, as far as I'm concerned. But I don't think that you can compare the Israeli government to Hamas. And I even, you know, you, I, I'm in, you know, get out of Iraq, Afghanistan. I'm all with you. 
Israel is a bit more different in the sense that the proximity is so close. It's smaller than New Jersey. You, you know, you can YouTube. There's a YouTube video called like uh, like Hamas first person shooter, Hamas Call of Duty. And they put this camera on their helmet and you see them like digging, digging, digging. They pop out all of a sudden in Israeli territory and like charge these people. They're like in their underwear and they start shooting them with rocket launchers and, and, and Kalachnikovs or M16s, I forget, and then run up to him and start banging him on the head with the gun. So, I mean, this isn't Afghanistan, like, you know, like Ron Paul says, we just marched in, we can just march out. It's not quite the same. I, 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 wish, I wish it were, but it just isn't. And I just, I feel the liberty community takes an overwhelming, uh, either they say screw them all, or they take a side of the Gaza, the, 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 the Hamas, let's say. And I really think that most Israelis do want peace. I don't know if I could say the same about those in Gaza, from my opinion. The West Bank is another story, though. I think most of those people do want peace, and I think peace is achievable in that area. In well, Raphael, I want to thank you for your thoughts tonight on this, and thank you for the call. Uh, call in again. Uh, and this tonight is Free Talk Live. We've got to head out here, but uh, it... <laughs> You can give us a call, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. This is the show about your calls, and we have more to talk about Israel when we come back. Lumber Liquidators buys direct from the mills, giving you the largest selection of hardwood flooring at the lowest prices. Right now, choose from over yeah. 150 hardwoods on sale, including beautiful and stylish white plank pre-finished red oak for just $179 a square foot. That's less than half what you could pay at other stores. Plus, get Dream Home Laminate and Tranquility Vinyl Flooring for 20% off and yeah, Bamboo for only $179. Go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the well, store nearest you. More great deals stuff. and special 12-month financing available. But hurry, this sale ends Tuesday. Hi, I'm Chuck Woolery. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I really don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream. It's an arthritis pain relief cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn. It isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee, so you can use a whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt that you'll send it back. You know, the stuff really works. Get Australian Dream at Walgreens, CVS, or Walmart. I'm glad you did. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nesquik. Try Nesquik 4-Packs, perfect for lunches and great for kids on the go. Look for it in the juice aisle. Snack time is a great chance to sneak extra calcium into your child's diet without making him feel like he's eating something he doesn't want. Serve up dairy-rich foods like smoothies, flavored milk, frozen yogurt, and string cheese. He'll love the treat, and you'll love knowing how good it is for him. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, August 3rd, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.32 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,294 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $583. Antiwar.com reports the ability of most of the foreign ISIS fighters to maintain its control over broad swaths of territory in Iraq and Syria has rested on their ability to make a deal with tribal factions, giving them considerable autonomy. Tempers are flaring in the eastern Deir Ezor province of Syria, however, where several villages along the highway near the Iraqi border are in open revolt, with days of fighting and ISIS sending reinforcements to try to retake the villages. Reports suggest the trouble started when ISIS violated their agreement with tribal leaders and captured one of their local tribes. The villagers from three local villages marched on nearby Al-Ashara and burned the ISIS headquarters to the ground. 
The three villages in revolt are Kishkiya, Abu Hamam, and Granij. Three villages not far from Al Bukamal, the ISIS held city bordering Iraq's Anbar province, which is likewise under ISIS control. In the heartland of the new ISIS country, there is no serious chance three villages will be able to withstand an ISIS assault, but the anger there reflects the difficulty this faction is going to have in retaining its caliphate without the support of locals. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. Politico reports a Florida judge on Friday asked the state legislature to redraw the state's congressional map by August 15th, holding out the possibility that Florida could postpone some or all of its House elections until after the scheduled general election on November 4th. After weeks of nudging from Democratic groups and uncertainty for candidates running in House races, Circuit Judge Terry Lewis, who previously ruled the state's congressional map violated the Florida Constitution, on Friday provided some clarity on how a new map could still affect the 2014 election. Lewis wrote in the decision, Even if a revised map was in place today, the legal and logical machinations it would take to have the election on November 4th under that revised map is not something justified by law or common common sense. Adding, there is no way legally or logistically to put in place a new map, amend the various deadlines, and have elections on November 4th as prescribed by federal law. However, it might be possible to push the general election date back to allow for a special election in 2014 for any affected districts. Lewis, who ruled last month that the Republican-controlled legislature made a mockery of Florida's Fair Districts Amendment by taking politics into consideration when drawing two of the state's 27 congressional districts, asked the legislature to submit a remedial or revised map within two weeks, denying their request that the map not be put in place until after the 2014 election. But Lewis did not take Democrat suggestions to have an independent special master redraw the map. A hearing is set for August 20th, less than a week before before the scheduled primary elections. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Reuters reports a North Carolina man died and 20 people were hospitalized due to an apparent drug overdose during a pop and dance music festival in Maryland, according to authorities. Tyler Fox Viscardi, 20 years old, of Raleigh, North Carolina, died after being taken to the hospital at 9 p.m. Friday after he attended an all-day mad, decent block party festival in Columbia, about 20 miles southwest of Baltimore. Authorities said Viscardi died of an apparent drug overdose and investigators are working to determine and what type of drugs were in his system. The Mad Decent Block Party travels throughout the United States. Investigators have said similar circumstances have unfolded at other Mad Decent Block Party events across the country. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. House of Representatives Bill 323, the IHOP should stay open all night so we can get some Pancakes Act. This bill was submitted for immediate review very late last night under the provisions of the National Emergency Legislation Act. Can we turn, dim the lights? It's really bright. H.R. 323 would, by federal order, require all IHOP restaurants to, quote, remain open 24 hours effective right this minute, even if some manager has to get out of bed and drive down here to start making some pancakes. Well, we stand by the bill. Right. We wrote it, apparently. This bill would also require the federal government pay to build a tram or monorail or whatever connecting yeah. the Black Sheep Pub right, on North Capitol rail. Street to all IHOP mm -hmm. restaurants I think in the we made city. some illustrations The of bill that. gives the estimated cost of the tram as probably not even that much. You are wasting my time and the time of this Excuse committee. Excuse me, I gotta go. What? <clears throat> Congressman, this committee is go. still in session. You can't... This is the Onion News Network.
Free Talk Live, Sunday night edition. And tonight here with you, filling in for Brian and Stephanie, is myself, Johnson. Danica. And me, filling as me. (laughs) Mark. (laughs) But you're here all the time. I mean, you're not special. No. (laughs) You're like, no. He's special, just like everybody else. Mm So, uh, I want to talk about a little bit here, uh, shopping with Free Talk Live. If you want to get yourself something on, for example, Amazon or Newegg or, um, what Walmart? else, Mark? What? Walmart. Walmart, that's right. Now, Walmart, if you're going to be shopping at one of those particular vendors, you can donate money to Free Talk Live without donating any money. All you have to do is go to shop.freetalklive.com and click on one of those affiliate links. And essentially, Walmart or Amazon or Newegg will donate a part of whatever you buy to Free Talk Live for you. Um, So it doesn't cost you anything, and Free Talk Live makes out. So go to shop.freetalklive next time you're shopping one of these wonderful vendors, and you will help us out. So we've been talking a little bit here about uh, Israel. We've been talking about sugar taxes. And I have a little bit more that I'd like to talk about uh, in regards to Israel. Some other things have happened there recently. Apparently, some Jews were fined for singing a song called Ani Mamin. I think I might be totally... No, you've got it wrong. Go ahead. (laughs) How do you know I've got it wrong? No, Because there's no way to get something like this right. (laughs) Did you hear how the uh, last caller, Raphael, pronounced Hamas? Well, if if there was a CH, I would know to do the (laughs) Ha sound. Hello. You know, but I I don't know if it's... I think it's Mamin. M-A-A-M-I-N. Maybe doesn't matter. Just give your best shot at it. So, anyway. Guard... You know, it's like Ian. It's like if I have if something is said in a uh, a it's Spanish, I have to say it ridiculously over the top because I'm filling in for the first chair tonight. So, <laughs> so uh, well, guards at a memorial site shouted at Benai Akiva, a group from Australia and South Africa, and then fined them three hundred and fifty dollars. Guards at the Auschwitz Birkenau concentration camp memorial site shouted at Jews who sang Ani Mamin. A song based on lines from Rambam, uh, Maimonides, this is just (laughs) ridiculous, uh, which was known as the hymn of the camps during a visit to the camp uh, and then find their guide 1,000 zloty or about $350. So says the guide, Rabbi Raphael Ostroff, who is also the head of the Etzian Block Religious Council. Ani Mamin has several tunes, one of which was composed by the Hasidic rabbi in the cattle cars en route to Nazi con- camp- concentration camps. The song was then adopted by other Jewish prisoners and became known as the Hymn of the Camps. So the rabbi has written, uh, Dear friends, and he wrote this on Facebook, Friday, yesterday, I am leading a group of Benaya Kiva from Australia and South Africa. As usual, the group sings holy songs of prayer during the visit. This time, the guards at the ca- of the camp hounded us all the time, shouting at us not to sing. Even in the gas chamber of Auschwitz I, the guard came up to me and shouted at me, Tell them immediately to shut up. We then went to Birkenau in a secluded part of the camp. The boys spontaneously started singing Ani Mamin. This, song, the song, this was the song that the prisoners sang on the way to be murdered there. A guard drove after us with his, with his car and demanded that they be silent. I told him that I don't have control over this as they are singing from their hearts. He then threatened to arrest me and called the police. In my group, there were a few boys whose grandparents were prisoners. I don't understand. Right. Uh, why are okay? Who are these these guards? These are German guards of uh, the Auschwitz that uh, just kind of when you say guards, I, I suppose like you know, they're park rangers. Um, I the, guess yeah. the equivalent of park rangers, and they don't want people singing at all, or specifically this Animo Me song. Th- and why don't they want them to sing it? Do we have any clue? I think it's, it's going to get into more details, but I think what's going on, and this is just my long shot guess, and maybe uh, there are other folks out there who have more information. Uh, you can give us a call, 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Uh, but I believe that what's going on here is that this is, um, there's a law in Germany that um, 
says specifically, and I think that there are maybe a few other areas that around there that have this law that essentially you can't mention anything with relation to the Holocaust. It's like verboten <laughs> to even talk about it for the most part. Um, hmm. So I'm wondering if this isn't doesn't fall under that. I mean, it is at Auschwitz, so that seems you'd think really strange. <laughs> yeah, it seems very odd. You'd think that people would be able to. <laughs> refer to this. I mean, this is going to be a big trip for a lot of people. Their their parents or their grandparents were killed there, or yeah. uh, they may have been housed there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you're suspiciously silent here, Danica. Haven't you been to Israel? I mean, don't you know some a little bit about this? Uh, n- no, I went there twice, but I mean, a lot of it was just I was there visiting friends, and I, ironically, the when I went there, there wasn't really a whole lot of. Uh, there wasn't a lot of this drama that was going on. I went in, let's see, 2007 and then 2008. So, I mean, there was still obviously an uneasiness going on, but not not certainly to this extent. Right. And if, obviously, you know, I guess in Israel, too, you wouldn't have this sort of... No, in Israel, this is, I mean, this would be perfectly fine. Right. So, okay, to continue the story... Um, in my group, wait, let me see. Uh, they're about the fine. I opted to pay. Uh, he opted to pay the fine as they were threatened with 24 hours of imprisonment or paying that $350 fine. So they opted to pay the fine as it was two hours before Shabbat. I was. It was totally unacceptable. The camp administration treats Jewish groups as if we are tourists to the site like any other group. They have to be considerate and compassionate to Jewish groups. We are not visiting there out of curiosity. It is a journey to the depths of our souls. If the camp administration does not understand us, this, then they are incompetent to rule of this sacred site. The next rule will be that we are not allowed to carry Israeli flags as it might offend someone. I demand a formal apology from the camp administration and the refund of the fine that I had to pay. Program coordinator for the Benai Akiva trip, Michael Ram- Rainsbury, gave his own version of events. My account of an incident that took place at the Auschwitz-Birkenau on Friday with Rav Rafi Ostroff on the World Benai Akiva Hashrat MTA Boys Trip to Poland. Um, after the tour of the site, we marched out singing Ani Amin, Ma- uh, sorry, Ani Mamin, <laughs> Ani Ma'amin. Try it again. They spelled it, yeah, they, spelled it, <laughs> they spelled it differently here. So Ani Ma'amin. With pride in waving our Israeli flags. Unfortunately, at this point, as well as twice previously in Auschwitz, we were ordered to not sing by the security personnel at Birkenau, despite it being an established practice for Jewish groups. The group felt a strong sense of pride and duty to sing the same song Jews sang on the way to their deaths and continued to sing. Security refused to let the matter go and persisted in stopping us singing, despite us calmly explaining to them our reasons for doing so. They then called the police who arrested our guide, Ra- Rav Rafi Ostroff, for breaking the rules of the site. Rather than being in custody for Shabbat, we paid a fine and left for Shabbat. At all times throughout the situation, we kept the group removed from the incident, and no one was placed in a dangerous situation. To They've their- got an amazing little singing tax going on at these, uh, yeah. <laughs> these <laughs> right. old concentration camps. Yeah. To their credit, they remain dignified throughout the incidents, merely continuing to sing with pride. We have already started making rep- uh, representations to ensure that we receive our money back. The site apologizes for the behavior of their staff and that this will not happen to another Jewish group again. Um, so I guess it does not go into any more details and I apologize for that. Uh, you know, I just thought it was really interesting that the guards there are behaving, you know, in a way to shut this kind of thing down at Auschwitz, you know, like that's, it seems it very seems bizarre. Like it would be so obvious that this should, this is an unacceptable way to handle the situation. It would seem that way. Right. It, it's it's really bizarre. Um, I I'm very surprised at this. I would be interested in the other side of the story as to why they can't have singing at their particular, you know, because this is just a blog post or something. This isn't a, you know, this doesn't even pass for journalism, <laughs> other than this occurred. Right. I'm wondering if they just don't want to make it seem like that they're siding with Israelis. They'd probably want to keep it neutral. I don't know. I mean. What, what's the other side on this one? <laughs> you know, I mean, the other side? Well, we should have gassed him. I don't know. I mean, oh, just, my gosh. Wow. There's, well, there's no other side. <laughs> That's the point I'm trying to make. Do you have any thoughts? Do you want to call in? Let us know. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. This is the Sunday Night Edition of Free Talk Live. Crashed. 
The Death of the Dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones adds, This is an excellent book. It is also a little scary because it could very well be true. I hope it's fiction, and Julia Moffat calls it a gripping read and the most exciting and insightful book this year. Crashed is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its Amazon reviewers calling for a sequel. This book is totally worth your time. It's well-researched, liberty-oriented, realistic, gripping, and gritty. Do yourself a favor and don't miss this one. Get your copy at Amazon. Crashed, The Death of the Dollar by William Cooper. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call one 800 2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. I am a non-attorney spokesperson. Attention men who've taken Androgel or any other testosterone therapy products. Androgel or other low-T products have been linked to heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, even death. Scientific studies indicate that the use of testosterone therapy products may double a man's risk of heart attack. If you or a loved one took Androgel or a testosterone therapy product and suffered from a heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, or any other cardiac event, you might be entitled to financial compensation. You have rights, and you need to let us fight for your rights. And you pay no fees unless we win. So call the Tort Attorneys right now. 800-708-7917. 800-708-7917. 800-708-7917. Cases may be referred to participating law firms in your jurisdiction. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is the Sunday night edition of... Free Talk Live, and we're here taking your calls, and we will be doing so all night. We're right now talking about uh, Israel, and we are talking about uh, the sugar tax in Connecticut. You can go um, and get the new blockchain.info app for your phone. Um, so the, the old app still works. 
course, but they have a new and improved app out. It's uh, Everybody who has used it claims it's a lot better. Actually, it's now available for iPhone. Is that right, Johnson? Yeah, it's fantastic, actually. I ha- I was one of the early people who got it before it got banned from the, uh, the Apple Store, and I got the automatic update when they finally got back into the iOS Store, so I was very pleasantly surprised. I heard about it before the news even kind of got out because it just was there on my phone. I was very happy. My version of iOS is uh, so, or excuse me, my version of Android is so old that I can't get the new one, new uh, one. But uh, most people can. Most people that don't you can't have phones. update your phone. Is it just one of those phones that won't update or something? I have like no that? clue. Yeah. Um, but you can go to blockchain. Excuse me. Yeah, blockchain. dot com to get the new app, and it is supposed to be really awesome. And if you need a Bitcoin wallet, blockchain.info is the place to do that. Um, and you can use it through the app on your phone or through your laptop or desktop or whatever, all the different ways. I just used it today, and it's amazing to be able to interact in that fashion, blockchain.com. Now, I've had an Android phone, never had an iPhone, but I remember when they first issued out that they were no longer going to be supporting the blockchain app on the Apple Store. Was there a reason that they finally decided to bring it back? Do um, can you tell me about that? Apple released the the ban on Bitcoin apps is essentially what they happened. They just finally just said, okay, I mean, Bitcoin's I'm, not so bad. I'm sure they got a lot of pressure. and really, Oh, I mean, yeah. Essentially, they were just being anti-competitive. They were being jerks. Apple was like, well, we don't want to have an alternative payment system because we're trying to build our own payment system. And we want everybody to pay us and take a cut and take profits. You know, it's kind of essentially the way a lot, you know, a lot of these other payment processors and people with money systems, they don't want competition. So they're trying to keep Bitcoin out of the market and they're getting too much pressure pressure and Bitcoin keeps growing and people want to use Bitcoin. So uh, they can't really keep blocking it like that. It just doesn't make sense. Well, that is awesome. And, and, you know, it's great when people are out there and putting lots of pressure on organizations when organizations do uh, kind of shady things. And that brings me to our caller, uh, Tom who wants to talk to us about the uh, market basket protests. Uh, Tom, are you there? Am I doing something wrong? That's amateur hour tonight <laughs> with me. So, yeah. Tom, are you there? Now, yes, I'm still here. Now, the uh, thing I wanted to bring up, uh, the, they're going to have this job fair. Okay, now picture yourself, you're working at the competing supermarket. Okay, and recently, let's say some time ago, you got your paycheck and a nice tidy little bonus because the store did 8% better than the same time period a year ago. And so they do this little profit-sharing bonus, and they they give you this extra money there because you're such good workers. Your store did 8% more in sales than the same time period a year ago. Okay, well, imagine the bonuses that they stand to get when the store is getting four times as much business as it did. That's a 300% increase over a year ago. Okay, and Because now, the sales have been so bad over the last month at Market Basket, you're claiming that next year the sales are going to be significantly better? No, I'm talking about at the competitor. Okay. The store, the sales are soaring because everybody's boycotting Market Basket. They're stampeding over to the competitor. Yeah. And the sta- the competitor's employees would stand to reason that they would be in line for some very uh, lucrative bonuses if they stay with the competitors. Do they get bonuses and, at other grocery stores? Because I know Market Basket gives them. I, I don't know what they've got for bonus situations at the different uh, supermarkets, but if it's like I'm describing, then Market Basket is not going to have much luck trying to lure them away by offering another dollar an hour higher uh, hourly rate. Right. And the other, the other, job fair. the other competitors right now are also hiring because they need more staff to deal with the overage. So, like, I, I, I've seen, you know, grocery stores in the area are hiring like crazy. They're hiring. They're bringing people in from other stores outside the Market Basket area. They're doing everything because they want to keep these people coming in. So uh, Market Basket is not going to be able to hire a whole lot of qualified people like cake decorators. I mean, there's skills and produce. That's a skill that you can't just uh, learn in a few days, and like what temperatures to keep all the, the different stuff at and how to handle all the different ones and how to tell when they're bad and everything else. That's why uh, they were able to pretty much shut down the produce warehouse because uh, it's 
you, you got to have people who know how to run the place and and the people who knew how to run the place uh walk off the job and said bring back Arthur T and we'll go back to work and you know uh so that's how, how that How close happened. are they and, to getting that solved uh Tom I mean I I it seems like a no-brainer at this point. The right. board has been – I mean, they're driving this uh, chain into the ground. There's definitely some pride and ego or something. There's a lot oh, of Oh, yeah, it. for sure. I mean, it's it boils down to a sibling rivalry. Actually, not really sil- sibling. Cousins, but cousins. Uh, I think the uh, capitalists who, who went to business school and learned how to run a standard business are going to li- realize, like the Grinch, you know, like – Maybe Market Basket is not your typical store. Maybe Market Basket is a little bit more. You know, so I'm going to leave you with that. That's what I think. Thank you for very much for the call, Tom. So, uh, I mean, what do you guys think about this? Do you think that this uh, boycott of Market Basket this has lasted long enough. I mean, are they going to be able to bounce back from this? A lot of people are speculating that Market Basket is not going to be able to recover, even if RDT does get back in, and that we could basically kiss Market Basket goodbye. No, I, I think that Market Basket will come back if they get um, Arthur T. back in. I agree completely. There's n- numerous companies, bigger than Market Basket even, that have had consecutive years of losses and has still been able to maintain in business. Well, I, I, see, the, the reason is Market Basket really is a better grocery store, right. mm-hmm. um, and it, it's about location. I don't go there because it's too, you know, it's just out of my way to go right. there. But it's a better grocery store. I from, practically live in Market Basket. Uh, so. <laughs> well, and and so when people get their way, when the boycotters get their way, they'll be back. And there's been a lot of publicity for Market Basket over this, so they'll probably drag in an extra few people. Would be my guess. Yeah, I, I think the publicity here has been huge. So I Absolutely. think, but it's only yeah. good publicity if Arthur T gets back. Right. In which case. Exactly. Because otherwise, it just looks like a petulant fit. Yeah. By the board here. Yep. I wish there was more news about it. Cause, you know, all we know is that he did offer to buy it, and they're still talking about it. I, there's some video. I've seen some video of Arthur S, and he just looks like an angry, angry man. <laughs> so you know. Uh, I'm just. I, I'm hoping that we can, uh, that they can figure that out. I'm hoping that R, RDT does get back in. I want to see Market Basket survive. I want to see Market Basket survive, thrive. Um, if you have any thoughts about Market Basket, or if you have any thoughts about uh, what's going on in Auschwitz, you can give us a call at eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. We're looking forward to talking to you. Uh, this is the Sunday night edition of Free Talk Live. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. When the cleaners ruined some special clothing, all they could do was show us a sign that said they weren't responsible. But when they got the letter from one of our Legal Shield attorneys, he promptly gave us a check for $1,152. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Do you ever feel like you live in an alternate universe? As the stock market hits new highs, the middle class are dying. Manipulated financial markets and economic figures, chaos on our border, China and Russia bypassing the dollar. Life is getting ready to change. You need to prepare to thrive in the new economy. Go to babyboomerbackupplan.com or call 888-507-8789. That's 888-507-8789. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. 
Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com if you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp freetalklive.com You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm That's cam.lrn.fm You are listening to Sunday night edition of Free Talk Live. Here with you tonight, it is Johnson. And Danica. And Mark. And we are talking about all sorts of things. We've got, uh, we're talking about what's going on in Auschwitz, where they've been banning them from singing. We've been talking about attacks on fat people or soda or something like that. And um, we are talking to you and taking your calls. But first, Mark. I think you were talking to us about, uh, you know, we, you said something about these these survival camps and, uh, or sorry, these, these death camps and, you know, something about people being gassed. And I think if you don't want that to happen, you want to survive, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure the Survival Training School of California is going to really do anything about. I was, think it would if you need to get out of Dodge and you need, you know, that the the SHTF is going on in the cities and the urban areas, and you know that they're breaking and looting stores, and you need to get out of there in a hurry. The woods are going to be the best place for you to go. I guess you're right. Uh, okay, it's I'll like retract that. that. Movie, right? I mean, there's a movie where the Jews hid in the woods. Actually, there's uh. A uh, I can't remember the name of the movie. But I don't. Was, I don't know that know it either. But it, I can it say that the James Bond, the guy who played the uh, the mo- Craig Craig something or the most recent James Bond, he was actually in Daniel this, Craig. Daniel Craig was in this movie, and the Jews took to the woods. I can't remember the There's name. There's only like three movies, three James Bond movies he's been on. So it can't wasn't be a James Bond movie. It was, oh. it was, <laughs> It was a movie about, uh, you know, the Jews, Jews taking to the woods, taking to the woods and, and fighting against the Germans. Well, uh, I'm, I'm not going to say that everybody needs survival training, but I can tell you that every year lots of people do need survival training. You may end up being one of them. Plus, this is kind of a really fun vacation, I would think, um, rather than just sort of going and, you know, lounging about. You get a real chance to put your put yourself under some pressure, see how you perform. I think that it could be a lot of fun for a, a lot of people. And survival schools, they're not all the same. They're not all the same by a long shot. The Survival Training School of California has trained 
uh, military individuals um, from three branches of service. As a matter of fact, uh, coming from the United States Marine Corps here, J.J. Carroll Jr. says the instruction during your course was extraordinary. You exceeded all expectations as survival instructor. Your steadfast ability to perform your duties as an instructor has been truly an asset to the training center and earned you the respect of the Marines. And, I mean, you know, that's, it's pretty awesome, this commendation uh, that he's gotten. They've uh, they've taught folks from Joshua Tree National Park, um, U.S. Marine Corps Mountain Warfare Training uh, Center Survival Instructors, U.S. Navy Search and Rescue, the U.S. Air Force, Stanford University. Just amazing the amount of folks. They've been featured in all kinds of uh, news. And I want you to understand Wherever you go, you're not going to get the training that you would get from the Survival Training School of California. Check out their pocket knife only uh, field training that they've got going on coming up here in the near future. Just go to CaliforniaSurvivalTraining.com. It's California Survival training.com thomas coin is their lead instructor his uh, list of credentials is far longer than i can possibly read here on the air but you can see some videos that uh, he participated in um, just you know things uh, on different news services that kind of thing you can give him a call i'll give you the number here it's survival training uh, survival training excuse me California survival training.com um, 805-503-8861 California survival training.com 805-503-8861 I remember the name of that movie that I was talking about there where the Jews take to the woods there it was uh, Defiance with Daniel Craig and Liv Schreiber Oh okay so if you remember that and it was you know it was Eastern Europe, they escape into, uh, it was uh, Belarusian forests there that they actually, they go into the woods and they have to survive. And it's a pretty intense film. But since we're talking about that sort of thing and we're talking about what's going on uh, in Auschwitz right now, we have a call. Uh, let's go to Deb, who is calling us from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, or sorry, Dana. Dana, are you there? Dana, Dana can you hear me? Can you hear me? Dana, are Dana, you there? Put her on hold. I yep. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong here or if what's going on, but <laughs> hopefully we'll we'll get that uh, resolved. Uh, in the meantime, um, I have another story that we were going to talk about here. If you re recall, uh, it, there were some white flags that were hung were, from the Brooklyn Bridge, right? That's correct. But they and were white American flags. They were like bleached American flags. Okay, yeah, that's kind of what it was like. It was like completely, I mean, that you could still kind of see that there were stars and stripes on the flags, but they had been completely bleached. Yeah, they looked like they were bleached by the sun, but um, maybe they were, you know, artificially done. I don't know how those could have been that bleached. Those were extremely, there was no color whatsoever in these flags. So a man has claimed that he's behind these flags, and it happens to be a marijuana activist who goes by the name Reverend Bud Green. <laughs> Bud Green. <laughs> I, I believe I've heard of Bud Green before, but he has claimed responsibility for the idea of placing two giant American flags on the Brooklyn Bridge with, uh, the, well, I guess it says with white ones. I don't know how the, the article is written a little strangely. Um, uh so Green reportedly told the paper on Thursday that he planned to put up more flags later, but his plan was thwarted when security was increased on the bridge. Police uh, previously said that four or five people climbed the bridge's two towers. Of course, they're just making stuff up in the early hours of July 22nd and placed the two American flags, which what appeared to be whitewashed or fade, faded versions. The operation involved disabling a pair of spotlights and appeared to have been carefully uh, planned. New York Mayor Bill de Blasio called the security breach at the bridge a wake-up call and that he was absolutely concerned. You're, well, and, you know, with rights, I mean, because those could have easily been explosive devices or something of that nature, you know, which nope. this security is all theater. In case you haven't figured that out yet, this any of the security around any of anything is all nonsense because at any time they could just switch tactics and go destroy something else. Well, the, yeah, that's the difficulty of um, you know security generally. Right. I, I think that people like to believe that it's you know th that things are secure. They're keeping us safe. And every once in a while, these policing organizations, these security organizations, manage to catch somebody doing yeah, something. R roughly, what is it? Roughly thirty five hundred Americans died in nine eleven, and since that time, roughly five thousand have been killed by police. Something like that. Right. Indeed. Th th that, that <laughs> They're much... keeping you safe with their guns and their bullets through your brains. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I wonder if that's convincing to people. Um, I mean, when I see, because I, I mean, obviously the the thirty five hundred people on nine eleven, um, you know, they're, they're innocent, and the thirty five hundred well, people they're are innocent. all dirty, dirty criminals. Obviously, I think that uh, some people might think over. that. <laughs> Some people might think that, right. um, you know, that you have to sort of tell them about individual stories um, to, you know, to, to drive it home. I don't know. Have they right. not even included how many dogs have been killed? Yeah, exactly. I'm sure that's <laughs> well over 5,000. Um, so uh, New York Police Deputy Commissioner of Intelligence John Miller said at the time that the police did not believe the incident was connected to any terror threat. Green reportedly told the New York Daily News that he is the f- founder of a pro-marijuana and anti-government organization dubbed the Pot Party, which stands for, as this is, cla- <laughs> this is good, people opposing tyranny. Uh, according to, <laughs> I like this Pot Party, um, According to the paper, Green said he came up with the idea of swapping the flags, but he did not uh, not actually put the plan into effect. Instead, he reportedly said the men who did the deed are professionals who he does not know by name. Okay, so maybe four or five people did climb the, the towers, so maybe the police aren't just making stuff up as I thought. Um, American flags fly above the pillars year-round and are replaced by the Department of Transportation workers when they become frayed, police said. They are lit from the bottom by a lamp at the base of each tower at night. Miller said that as at a as of around 8.30 p.m. on July 21st, the American flags were still flying in the Brooklyn and Manhattan towers of the bridge, but around 5.30 a.m. the next day, construction workers noticed the white flags had taken their place. Surveillance video revealed that around 3.10 a.m., several people were seen crossing the bridge, four or five of them in a group. Several minutes later, the light that normally illuminates the American flag on the Brooklyn side of the bridge flickered and went out, Miller said. About 12 minutes after that, the light on the Manhattan side of the bridge also went out. When members of emergency services unit went to the top of the bridge later that morning to document the scene, they found two 20 foot by 11 flags on each tower, which appeared to be American flags with stars and stripes that had been bleeped white. If you have any comments about this, give us a call 1-800, sorry, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. This is the Sunday night edition of Free Talk Live. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. The human body is extraordinary. Despite all the stresses we inflict upon it, it still works hard to stay in balance. Thousands upon thousands of people rely upon heart and body extract to help their body stay balanced. This excellent 100% natural herbal formula helps maintain healthy blood pressure levels, cleans arteries, promotes good circulation, balances cholesterol, and more. HB extract paired with healthy lifestyle choices like good nutrition and exercise can give you a life free of pain, sickness, and fear. Recapture your youthful vitality and experience your body healing itself with the aid of hb extract it's extremely effective and it starts working in just days visit hbextract.com to learn more and to read scores of testimonials from satisfied customers and we've never increased our price in over 10 years that makes heart and body extract as great a value now as it was the first day we sold it a healthy heart is a happy heart call 866-295-5305 or go to hbextract.com Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. 
This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Thanks to Bitcoin, LRN.FM is able to provide our free-to-air satellite channel across North and Central America. You can listen to LRN.FM 24-7 via satellite for no monthly cost. Learn more about our satellite channel at sat.lrn.fm. And if you'd like to help us continue to expand, you can send us Bitcoins via the address you'll find under the Bitcoin graphic in the right column of LRN.FM. To learn more about Bitcoin, visit weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Sunday night edition of Free Talk Live, and here with you tonight it is johnson danica and mark and if you want to hear a show that's not necessarily amateur hour you can always go to our archives (laughs) where you can hear how you know all the past shows that i've been on and how long i've been with free talk live and how weird and inexcusable it is for me to be as bad at doing this as i am so you can go to archives.freetalklive.com we were doing free talk live at your house (laughs) In 2003. Yes, exactly. Before <laughs> podcasting even existed. <laughs> right. Well, podcasting is the what the, it's a program that delivers audio from from one place to another essentially. So MP3 files certainly existed in in Free Talk right. Live was doing that long before podcasting right. ex, uh, existed, but we were able to get on that sort of podcasting Although you could barely wave. call that a house. It's more like an apartment was that apartment. was a pit of filth. Is essentially <laughs> what that was. It was sort of like the rat's nest den of what do you expect? Scum from and villainy. Young people. <laughs> that place was awful. Um, but we are here taking your calls tonight, and we've been talking about uh, this uh, banning on singing that's been going on in Auschwitz. And so let's try, you know, my amateurness, try to actually answer a call here again. And we will talk to Dana in Michigan. Dana, are you there? Success! Yay! Yay. There we go. <laughs> You Johnson. <laughs> um, I told I told your call screener. I said, and you guys want all of us to relocate to New Hampshire? Are you kidding me? <laughs> if you can't pick up a phone, <laughs> well, it's it's kind of a okay. special phone system. It's all computers, and there's all sorts of blinking lights and weirdness. It's not a normal phone. No. Not all of us are that incompetent. <laughs> oh, okay, trust me. Okay, and I yes, and I'm familiar with that. But anyway, um, okay, for some seriousness. I did not personally, there are many death camps, but I did not personally visit Auschwitz, uh, but two of my media family members did. When they came back, they gave an account that you were almost there. But, of course, when it's certain things you have in life, they must be experienced, and no retelling or recounting is ever going to give you that exact feeling. But this is what I was told. You know how you don't... You don't let your children run around on the grass at grave sites, you know, in the cemeteries. And adults shouldn't be walking over graves. You should be walking in between them. Right. But yet, when there's a group burying someone, if they if they quietly within the group uh, recite the Our Father, that's acceptable. But then there are other places of death. 
that because of how the people died, unlike a grave site, which a, an Our Father, if you're Catholic, you know, Our Father, Hail Mary, whatever, is appropriate, you know, quietly. But there are places like Auschwitz, any of the death camps, um, you know, since the beginning of time where horrific atrocities have taken place. Um, you know, another place was 9-11. This same two immediate family members went to 9-11. And I think, and I mean, and this is not knocking the Jews. If anybody has a right to pray or sing or do anything, there are people, siblings still alive. That didn't happen that long ago. Right. That lost their siblings, parents, and grandparents there. And so if anybody has a right, they should. But but this is what my two immediate family members shared with our family. There is such a reverence there that even Jews that are there cry into their white linen hankies or into a Kleenex silently. It is so painful. And my family is not Jewish. We are Eastern European, and I am personally only second generation in this country. But um, And some of those death camps were in the country that I came from, not by my people, but by the Germans, run by the Germans. And I am not of German descent, and I'm not knocking people of German descent. That was a whole different time and a whole different generation. But there is such a reverence there, just like at, at the 9-11 site. You don't break out in prayer. You go, Oh, another place, the war memorials in Washington. You know, those, those poor veterans, few that are left, a few thousands of World War II, you know, or you kind of, you quietly go up and put a piece of paper down with a lead pencil and, you know, run it over to get yeah, the name doing of like your an loved one. Exactly, but you don't hear people out loud singing even prayers of reverence. You someone know, someone sent us a translation, so, Dana, uh, of the this song. So I guess the translation uh -huh. of this whole song, Ma Amin, is, I believe with the complete faith in the coming of the Messiah, in the coming of the Messiah, I believe. I guess that's essentially the translation of the whole song. So it, it sounds very similar to like what you're saying with the 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 daily bread, but, uh, the... That Catholic right, the prayer, reverence, yeah, the yeah, holiness. Reverence. Oh, I, oh, I don't doubt that. I'm not, I'm not arguing. I. That's why I started off my my sentence with nobody but the Jews have more right to, and you know they wouldn't be going there. Those are their people. Right. They're not going to be singing uh, songs of joy, you know, because yeah. the most no, people no, of course celebrate. Not. Yep. You Appreciate know, it, Dan. Thank you so as, much. As you're going, you're going home to, to see your maker. But I mean, no, no, I'm not saying that or insinuating that. But the thing is, I think they want to keep the peace because it's such a, a reverential. Remember what I said? It's the way that they died, right? And they Thank want to give. And I'm not. I, the utmost respect, uh, you know, those that are dead. I think it's and touchy, and yeah. I think that people, like, you know, if— my, my, I'm going to just tell you, my family members, I'm sorry to interrupt. I want you to know this. They said you could hear a pin drop. They said it was eerie. It was horrible. People who were nothing of Jewish descent or Eastern European or Middle Eastern, they were crying openly. Let me ask you one and question, women. Dana, and then, then we've got to go. But uh, the one question that I want to ask you is, do you think that these guards then felt uh, like that's what they were enforcing, is that is that they felt that they were helping to enforce a sense of reverence and a sense of sort of austerity at this um, at these camps? Do you feel like the guards felt justified in, in keeping the silence? I don't know if they felt justified. I can't say what their intent was, but that, but that might have been what they were instructed to do based on what my, my brother and sister-in-law's experience was. But why didn't they just say that to them? Yeah. What was the need for a threat of jail? Right, absolutely. Threats and fine? fines and all that. It's, very, it's exactly. ridiculous. But thank you so much for exactly. your call tonight, Dana. And have, have a wonderful evening. Right. Oh, and I'm... I'm sorry. But the um, really, that's all the government has is fines and and jail. I mean, what else are they going to threaten them with? That's what governments have: exactly. fines and jails. And you don't pay the fine, you go to jail. It's jails. So we've definitely got a lot of calls here on the on the line, Mark. And I, you know, we've got someone here who's calling in specifically to ask you a question. That's James from Arizona. So James, are you there? Wait. Reminds me of uh, reminds me of life is beautiful, but uh, I, I almost forgot my question to Mark. A comedian made a, a had a comedy scene in Auschwitz. It was very funny, but he was Jewish, so he was entitled to make a joke out of it. The movie lives up to the five stars. It 
think it won Best Picture. Anyway, uh, about 15 years ago. Anyway, Mark, I'm still tripping about how you uh, had this most important point about how Switzerland has never been uh, attacked by Hamas, Hezbollah, or any political organization of a certain religiosity and of, an, of the full extreme. And Switzerland was never invaded by – it was the only country in Europe that wasn't – it was also not ever invaded by Germany, just like uh, – I, the reason German the Jewish people assimilated just very well in Germany, and you can still gravestone still see gravestones with Steen and Witt right next to each other uh, on the same gravestone that weren't desecrated. My point is, at the same time that that all that crap was going down in the 30s, the people in Palestine today, their ancestors were rooting for the Germans in uh, all over Europe, and they wished that Auschwitz had never been closed until they achieved the final solution. That's all I got for you. This, uh, those are the only thoughts I have for you tonight, except for the question for Johnson. I Real thought, quick. Well, hey, wait Johnson, a second. If, um, I, I want to address that. I thought that the animosity in um, the whole Israel-Palestinian area didn't really uh, come to a head until after World War II. I didn't— um, No, my point, is, my point is the Palestinians that were there before World War II— didn't like the Jews that were there before World War II, and certainly didn't like the Jews that came in after World War II, and certainly didn't. It, it only but compounded the Jews have gotten along in Muslim for countries for a long time, and, and things have been sort of fine. I know, I know that their leadership is the problem. Hamas, Hezbollah, but Hamas uh, is new. Political organizations, you call you call them, they're the problem. Not just not the Palestinians, but I'm just saying that the Jews assimilated just fine with people that. Didn't want to kill them, so I was going to ask some, uh, Johnson. Yeah, that's a question. Here's a food for thought: if, um, if Israel announced today they were going to lay down all their arms, throw them, throw them into the Mediterranean, so to speak, uh, what would you think would happen? And if the Palestinians said they were going to lay down all their arms today and throw them into the Mediterranean, what do you think would happen? Yeah, I think right now either side would annihilate one another. It's pretty clear. I don't believe the Jews would do that. No, I don't well, believe we'll the Jews see. would do that. I believe they'd have, <laughs> Who knows we, what'll we'd happen? have peace in our time. Thank I you believe for we'd have peace in our time in the Middle East. The peace be with you, Hopefully. John. Hopefully. I, I certainly hope that we have peace in the Middle East. Uh, if you have any more thoughts on this, give us a call, uh, 855-453. This is Free Talk Live, the Sunday Night Edition. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs... Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. 
I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 31st, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,295. Silver opened at $20.66. And Bitcoin is trading around $574. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound. CD and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Mention promo code Liberty and get 5% off all DVD and CD duplication jobs. Online, affordablesound.com. Or give them a call, 512-459-5253. In the news, the United Nations has accused Israel of seriously violating international law after it struck a school located within a refugee camp, killing at least 15 people, mostly women and children, as they slept. That word from a report published by The Guardian. The UN Secretary General said the attack, which left 100 more injured, was outrageous and unjustifiable, and demanded accountability and justice. The attack left 17 dead, including a journalist, according to Gaza health officials. On Tuesday, the United States and the European Union announced plans to inflict a new round of sanctions against Moscow. The broader sanctions include limiting access to EU capital markets for Russian state-owned financial institutions, imposing an embargo on arms trade, and reducing Russia's access to sensitive technologies, particularly in the oil sector. In a speech in front of the White House, Obama said the U.S. will block the exports of specific goods and technologies to the Russian energy sector. Albuquerque Police Department is considering scrapping use of its MRAP armored vehicle after opposition from the public and negative press attention that accused the country of turning into a militarized police state. The department acquired the military-style vehicle through the Department of Defense's 1033 program which allows law enforcement agencies to obtain war vehicles used to hunt insurgents in Iraq and Afghanistan. An ACLU report warned that such vehicles are part of militarized policing in which Americans are treated like wartime enemies. Support for Liberty Beat comes from The Corey Moore Show, live each Friday night at 9 o'clock Central Time. That's CoreyMooreShow.com. And support for Liberty Beat comes from Roberts and Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online at rrbi.co or by phone at 800-874-9760. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 31st, 2014. Check out the website at the Liberty Beat. Com. A Houston-based psychiatrist has been arrested and indicted for charges related to organizing a human trafficking organization. KLTV reports that Riaz Mascuri was arrested by the Gregg County Sheriff's Office and booked under a federal warrant. Mascuri and three other men stand accused of bringing female dancers from India and forcing them to dance for clients 12 to 14 hours a day, seven days a week. The group reportedly ran the operation in New York and other cities between 2008 and 2010. Now, court documents state the men would confiscate the victims' passports and keep them captive in hotels, threatening them with violence if they attempted to escape. Mascuri was released on a $300,000 bond and is scheduled to appear before a judge in a New York City federal court on August 1st. Biotech companies Monsanto, Dow Chemical, DuPont, and others have spent more than $80 million since 2012 towards fighting mandatory labeling of genetically modified foods. That's according to a report issued by the Environmental Working Group on Tuesday. Part of the campaign includes the launch of an interactive website called GMO Answers, a broad effort to win over consumers. Scott Faber, executive director of Just Label It, which supports mandatory GMO food labeling, said the industry is losing. The New York Post has reported that more than 2,500 9-11 first responders have been diagnosed with cancer. New data from Mount Sinai Hospital's World Trade Center Health Program reveals a rise in cancer rates, including 1,655 rescue workers. When combined with firefighters and EMTs with cancer related to 9-11 cleanup, the total comes to 2,518. Support for Liberty Beat comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It, live Sunday afternoons at 4 o'clock on 1370 AM in Austin. That's 1370 AM on Sundays at 4. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Online, CaboBob's.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 31st, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting.
A severe allergic reaction causes Florida to swell up to twice its normal size. And a Ford assembly line worker is thinking about asking out a cute welding robot from work. It's time for the weekly feature with over 14 subliminal and completely unapologetic cues to purchase Energizer batteries. This is the Onion Week in Review. Area man Brett Lucier told reporters Tuesday he was left winded after placing a particularly lengthy lunch order at a local Wendy's. <sighs> a weary Lucier said he struggled to get through the seven item order and even suffered a cramp while asking for the spicy chicken sandwich. I thought I was just about done after I ordered that junior bacon cheeseburger, but I was able to get that frosty in there too. And in this week's op-ed pages, a local man talks about how he was always just one of those kids who was off by himself taking cats apart to see how they work. In your hands right now are the 24 AA Energizer lithium batteries you were subconsciously manipulated into purchasing. We make no apology. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. here tonight and with you it is Johnson and Annika and Mark and we have been talking all about uh, what's going on in Israel and we've been talking on about what's going on in uh, Auschwitz they've been doing this banning of singing it may be for austerity it may be just some overzealous cards we're not sure we've been talking a little bit about a tax on sugar in Connecticut. If you want to talk about any of these things or whatever is on your mind, you can give us a call at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. But first, we will go to your calls, and we will talk now to Liz in Michigan, who has, I think, some kind of interesting story to tell us about women going to the bathroom in a group. Liz uh, in Michigan, are you there? Yes, I am. And I'm a dinosaur now, and I live in a rather small town, but I've lived in a lot of student ghettos in my day. And no, women don't go to the bathroom by themselves. The really timid ones don't even go out after dark when most women are getting raped. Uh, they, they go to the bathroom in groups, and they do that so they can gossip and so they can put on makeup and share things together. You know, This is in regards to the unisex, the, the, the unisex bathrooms we talked about last night? Yes, and if I go into a bathroom and there's toilet paper in there, that's a bonus. If there's soap there, that's a bonus. You know, isn't there something bigger and better to worry about than the bathroom? Well, I would hope, but uh, apparently it's uh, it's going on in some college campuses. What do you think? Do you think that uh, unisex bathrooms are a better idea, or do you think that uh, you know the bathroom split, split up by sexes? I think that people that are that worried about it to continue to go in in groups. <laughs> They'll be fine. Yeah, okay. I think so. You know, what What will happen? What could possibly happen if they all walk in in a big group like they always have? Not um, much, I would think, especially if one of them has a handgun. Exactly. They'll probably be in pretty good shape. Exactly. That's all I had to say. Thanks. Thank you so much for the call. Mm -hmm. Do you think that'll make men start going to bathroom groups? Is that you know, <laughs> they have unisex bathrooms and I don't. women are all going in groups? Nope. Well, they have to make sure that all, their hair is properly gelled and their muscles are looking all chiseled and such. Yeah, that's what I do in the bathroom. <laughs> Excuse me, ladies. Can you zip me up? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's talk to uh, Luke in West Virginia who wants to talk to us about the implications of electing a libertarian. Luke, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. You yeah, uh, something yeah. I've, Sorry, what was that going? I've been think, something I've been thinking about lately is, you know, the election, uh, the midterms are coming up soon, and I mean, I've been reading about that guy, the pizza guy in one of the Carolinas, I forgot which one, you know, he might actually win, I, I doubt it, but then you have a lot of other elections where the steam might be going for a third party, I'd, I'd say the Libertarian Party actually get a... I'm not familiar uh, with this, did yeah. you just say the pizza guy? There is some Libertarian yeah. pizza delivery yeah, guy who's running for office. Wow. Yeah. Is this like yeah, um? Thinking, who was that guy who owned like Godfather's Pizza that ran in the last election? Papa, you know? John, Papa John's. No, I have no, no idea. Her Herman Cain, right? Uh, Her Herman Cain, the Federal Reserve Chairman of Kansas yeah, City, or whatever. Right, right. He, he, like he's a real conservative, sure. Right, right. But um, anyway, I'm thinking. Okay, what if 
what if someone gets elected to one of these offices and you know, the media can't spin that? They can't. They can't take you know some like Rand Paul or Ron Paul who have libertarian leanings, and then one day label them libertarian, one day label them conservative. And if someone has an L next to their name and someone on election night has their district code in gold, they are libertarian. What happens when they don't necessarily aren't? They're just Democrat or Republican light because Democrats or Republicans are so anti-freedom that you know someone who just isn't that could win. Well, you know, what if you the Libertarian Party is a little different than the Democrats and the Republicans in that the Democrats and Republicans pick their primary winners through just votes. I mean, but they're, they they pick their general election candidate through a primary. So I could say I'm a Democrat, even though I'm a pretty unconvincing Democrat. Um, <laughs> and, and if I happen to get enough votes on primary day, I'm the Democrat. Whereas the Libertarians appoint, and usually um, just beg, but um, they, they appoint their candidates. So at the very least, they've had the vetting of the local Libertarian Party. Well, I, I, I don't say this because I don't know what's going on here because two years ago, I you know, I helped to push to get Libertarians on the ballot. You know, no one has to file anymore because of the work that you know my campus group did. But I'm thinking you know, a lot of Libertarians, I look at their different candidates, I'm thinking they – just have the idea of you know uh, socially tolerant and fiscally conservative, but not from the idea that hey people have rights and you're not allowed to throw people in cages for dumb stuff. You have the right to your body. That's not where they're coming from. So if they get to Washington and they're one of these people who isn't really someone who is a libertarian, but still appeals to your non-thinking voters the same way Republicans and Democrats do, you know, they may have, they may be a world better than them. But they are the one person who gets in there, and what they do and everything they do is the – I don't know the idea that everyone's going to have of every libertarian that goes to Congress. Oh yeah, I think and that uh, not, you know they're not very good. It could be a very like, different. Yeah. It, it could be very bad if we, for instance, uh, elect um, a libertarian to you know some major office and people are like, and and then they're not as libertarian as they're right. supposed to be. Plus, then there's just sort of the things that happen. Um, you know, I mean, if you elect Rand Paul, for instance, even if he does act like a you know straight line libertarian all the way on every issue every time, and I don't think that he necessarily it's would do that. Extremely unlikely. But mm -hmm. um, if he did, he's still going to have to deal with whatever the world throws at us, and he's only got five years to be right or wrong, and he's not king; he's just president. So he has to deal with the laws that are sent to him. So it. The worst thing for the liberty move movement might very well be getting a libertarian elected to a major office. No, no that's kind of what I'm saying because it's one of the, it, it's it's what I'm saying is it, it may not be you know make sure when you're going around doing your grassroots thing supporting people make sure they're not just some guy who's going off the coattails of everyone who actually did a lot of yeah. grassroots work to get. And yeah, I think that's extremely ballot. true. I think that's extremely true to, to that you really, really have to be sure that the person who you are rooting for is principled. That's why I think so often that myself and also, I'm, you know, Ian especially uh, doesn't support someone like Rand Paul because he's not principled. You know, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I supported uh, uh, Mary Ruart in the last election or the well, election before when she was. When you say running. Rand Paul isn't principled, what do you mean? The things he says or the things he votes on? Because I suspect you haven't looked at his voting record. I've looked a little bit at the voting record, but let's talk about, like, for example, you know, droning people coming out of liquor stores. That's it's just, just the stuff he says. Sure. Yeah, sure. He doesn't yeah. He doesn't pitch libertarianism in the same way as votes. his father does. There have been some votes that he's made that have been extremely questionable as well. I mean, I'm not prepared to tell them to you right now because I don't care. I just care that I just know enough to know I don't like that guy and I don't know all the exact details. I, I just I don't want to spend my time focusing on that. But if I, you know, if I wanted to, I could go get you a list if you really wanted to know what, what votes I think of his are, are extremely questionable. Because from what I've been able to see, it looks for all the world like he says stuff to appeal to conservatives in order to get conservative backing and then he votes in a way that uh, is qu quite understandable, libertarian oriented. Well, I'll look into it and I'll get back to you on that because I don't think well, that's just, true. Every time he does something li libertarian oriented, they say he's just trying to uh, build alliances with progressives and things like that instead of saying, hey, he's doing this and here's the reason because he believes in or this works better or something. It always, whenever he does something that you know, gets a very good popular opinion made on the left, it's always he's aligned for aggressive, not he's 
that's the libertarian part. Whenever he does something that doesn't appeal to the left, he's a dirty conservative. Or even, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll slap libertarian on very negatively. But whenever he does something positive... Luke, do you have any final thoughts for us tonight? Um, just watch who you're supporting. Watch who you're donating your time and your money to. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with you 100%. I want to thank you for the call, Luke. Thank you. So, I mean, one thing I know for certain is we're going to have a president after this one. Yeah. <laughs> you can pick which one you think it, you'd like it to be. Um, I don't think in the general election that your vote counts for much. Um, I don't think that there's been a. I, I'm almost certain. I'd be willing to bet a large amount of money that they're among the. I think it's probably close to a thousand general election, um, presidential elections, because each state has its own election. Right. Every time. So, and they elect for the electorates. I don't think there's ever been one where it just separates by one vote. This is Free Talk Live, Sun in Edition. The Mills, giving you the largest selection of hardwood flooring at the lowest prices. Right now, choose from over 150 hardwoods on sale, including beautiful and stylish white plank pre-finished red oak for just $179 a square foot. That's less than half what you could pay at other stores. Plus, get Dream Home Laminate and Tranquility Vinyl Flooring for 20% off and bamboo for only $179. Go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. More great deals and special 12-month financing available. But hurry, this sale ends Tuesday. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Bruce Springsteen completed his new sci-fi concept album, Red Dust, which explores the lives of struggling 23rd century carbonite miners on Mars. The 14 tracks on the album address a range of everyday trials and tragedies faced by blue-collar Martian men, simply trying to put food on the table for their embryonically harvested juvenile clones while living under the hypocrisies of a corrupt planetary federation. In business, top financial experts have indicated that any hope of recovery for the struggling U.S. economy rests solely on Spokane, Washington resident Bill Laughlin, who is current browsing the power tools section at Sears. At 10.10 this morning, Laughlin investigated a scroll saw which sent stocks soaring nearly 300 points. 15 minutes later, with Laughlin straying away to try on sunglasses, Congress called an emergency joint session to offer Sears tax breaks in exchange for sending an experienced salesman over to help. In other news, a local man pushes the four millionth button of his life, and an area teenager is smoking like he's been to f***ing war or something. This is the Onion News Network. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. 
Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. You are listening to the Sunday night edition of Free Talk Live. And we are here talking about all sorts of things. We're talking about Israel. We're talking about Auschwitz. We're talking about uh, sugar taxes. And if you want to call about any of those things, you can give us a call, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Or if you want to contact us, you can also give us a call via Skype. Uh, just add username lrn.fm. You can get your Bitcoins or other cryptocurrencies at expresscoin.com. It's the best choice for buying Bitcoin. Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin, because it's fast, easy, completely legal. They're a licensed MSB and inexpensive. Expresscoin.com it prides themselves in their customer service so much so that the back end of their website just they just uh, revamped it completely so that they can be even more focused on meeting your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or Go to a local um, credit union that has shared branching. You should probably call ahead, but there's likely one within 10 miles of your house. You can go there, make a deposit. You'll get your cryptocurrencies the, within a business day. That's fast. Um, Expresscoin.com. You can even do it with from your smartphone by downloading the app at Expresscoin.com. And this is one of the few ways of getting Bitcoins without giving information. You don't have to give a license or anything like that when you get your cryptocurrencies by going to um, a credit union. You just make the deposit. You get it sent to your address, expresscoin.com. Now available in Canada, by the way. Use coupon code FTL to get up to $40, um, up to $40 without paying any fee expresscoin.com so i've got to use expresscoin because i've got a small confession to make uh, a lot of people have thought for some reason like for a while like especially at Porkfest, thought somehow that i was some kind of like dogecoin expert because i was like, <laughs> one of the first people to mention dogecoin uh, on ftl and uh i don't i never purchased any i don't own any i really want to at some point i just haven't really gotten around to it so danica what would you say has how has your experience with the doge been so far well i would say that if you're wanting to invest in dogecoin do it now i mean i think you can get <laughs> uh four thousand four hundred dogecoin for a dollar to the moon <laughs> it's like going to the moon <laughs> such value many wow um <laughs> I, you know, it was really funny because when I was at, when I was vending at Porkfest, I had a couple people ask if uh, I was taking Dogecoin. I told them they could send me tips if they wanted to in Dogecoin. Um, uh, other than that, like, it's just been a really fun thing to talk about. Uh, one of my friends did a promotional I video. To Shire dude. D yeah, Shire dude. You know, you know, hi there, Shire dude. Uh, he went around making a documentary, and you know, I told him, you know, with that, you know, we only accept Dogecoin here, and you know, told him to shoot that, and I'm he wasn't doing that. People can find that if they search on YouTube for like Shire dude Dogecoin or something like that. But oh, they even have Vern Supreme talking about it. <laughs> yeah. So the Doge is is taking off. <laughs> At any rate, we've been talking here about this uh, singing going on at Auschwitz and the banning thereof by the guards, and we've got another call about that. Uh, we've uh, got a call from Dave, who is calling us from high atop the per per high atop the Purple Majesty, I, I, maybe some kind of uh, bunker in the Rocky Mountains. I'm not really sure. Uh, Dave, are you there? No bunker, man. Just out in the open in the beautiful sunshine up here high in the Purple Mountain Majesties, man. Fantastic. Hey, yo, how you doing tonight? Hey. Doing all right. Long live Great. free talk. Uh, yeah, <laughs> love the free talk live, man. Hey, the, the Dogecoin, man, you should jump on it. I remember just, what, five years ago, if you bought one Bitcoin, they'd give you 10 of them. <laughs> <laughs> Something like yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, remember? So you never know, man. 
buy a hundred bucks worth of Dogecoin, man. You might be having ten grand. Later. Never work again. Yeah, that would be a good investment <laughs> these days too. If you bought, if you bought like you know, because Bitcoin's now worth r- roughly around six hundred bucks, it'd be like, you know, you spend six hundred, get six thousand. You know why not? <laughs> yeah, you know, Johnson. I remember you saying that a friend. Uh, was telling you that she was offered to do uh, some sort of commission job and the guy offered to pay her a hundred Bitcoin yeah, and she yeah. was so mad that she didn't accept it because that's $6,000 roughly yeah, now. Yeah. Hey, talking about the Ashworth's uh, singing, we have uh, the Thomas Jefferson Memorial. If you dance, they'll tackle you to the ground yeah. and smash your face in the cement Good for point. dancing. This is an amazing um, thing that they they started a group. It was Bureau Crash. They don't really exist anymore, but they were sort of a liberty oriented uh, was that action Bureau group. Crash? I thought it was after Bureau Crash. Well, it think, was kind of I, like the people f- of Bureau Talk Crash. Live, free Talk Live should get a busload of dancers, man, and let's go dancing at the Thomas Jefferson Memorial. All I'm aboard. Uh, let's go. Tour. Go dance in the Thomas, tour, memori- uh, we can, Thomas Jefferson Memorial. We can go in Daryl Short Bus. With- <laughs> Everybody start waltzing, man. Every, we could all start waltzing. Well, I don't know if we're going to be walking to Poland, but you know, if we, I do think a tour would be an interesting idea just to go to all these different places. Well, Google Maps just tells you to go jump in the water and swim all the way there. <laughs> it's like a really hard triathlon. Dave, did you have any more thoughts for us? Well, I was just, just trying to say here we're uh, – talking about complaining wow singing and um i i think it's governments think that they could just push us around and tell us what to do at our own memorials you know these memorials are for the people right i I mean that's really what it comes down to is these are these are places for the people not for the governments but the governments get a hold of them and they you know they got these rules or whatever and it, it's amazing. I don't understand why they would prohibit dancing because you're not destroying the monument. And, you're... and not making noise, distracting anybody, you dance in silence. Well, there was something else, actually. There was a quote, and I can't remember the quote, from Thomas Jefferson specifically. There was some sort of quote about dancing. It, it, almost like it was like almost like a quote about dancing at a memorial that Thomas Jefferson had. And, um, you know... I, they were honest. They were honoring the spirit of what Thomas Jefferson wanted, which was freedom. I mean, for the most part. So it was ridiculous to have this state oppression going on at the memorial down there. But when did that? I mean, when did that dancing take place? That was like 2010, 2011. Yeah, about two years ago, something like that. Two and a half years ago. Well, it um, the yeah, I would say that that was the most recent incident where um, Adam Kokesh and uh, and, a, and a troop, including uh, Meg McLean, got uh, thrown to the ground. Yep. But this was mm-hmm. it, it started like five or six years ago right. with the um, Jefferson Memorial one. Uh, right. One person got arrested, uh, but they kind of shoot out a bunch of people. It was a very, very interesting story. Yeah. Maybe we were overdue uh, for another visit. Yeah, the bus loads. We can go and in Daryl's short bus. Well, well, look what happened for dancing that wounded knee. The Indians started dancing again. And it freaked them out so bad, man, that they they slaughtered a whole bunch of them. Yeah, I don't know much about what happened at Wounded Knee, but it's certainly... uh, It's all about the ghost dance. They started a ghost dance. They were were trying to start a new life for themselves. And and they they were celebrating through dance. And it scared them, scared the pale fate. And they said, they can't be (laughs) dancing. They they can't be dancing. What, What... Look, they're dancing again. We know? can't have happiness here. Those damn no. pale faces. So let, let's start dancing all over, man. Dance in the street. Totally agree with you. Thank you so much for the call tonight, Dave. If it's, an, if it's a revolution that uh, doesn't have dancing, it's a revolution I'm not interested in. Yeah, exactly. If you want to. You can dance if you want to. Call us about <laughs> revolutions if you want to call and dance if you want to. You can <laughs> leave your tyranny. friends behind. You can leave the tyranny behind. <laughs> 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. This is the Sunday Night Edition of Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800 34 No Tax to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX 
That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Good people need help. The Homeowners Association said we had weeds and fined us $25. We told them they had the wrong house. They said if we didn't pay it, they'd file a lien. Our attorney demanded photographs, witnesses, and told them if they couldn't provide this, they must cease and desist. Issue solved. Worry less and live more with LSProtection.com. That's LSProtection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Do you love coffee as much as I love coffee? Here's a delicious way to drink the best of the best coffee and make a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Comano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox Coffee. And you can try a pound for free. All you do is cover shipping. It's organic, shade-grown, top 1% Arabica grade. 10% of future purchases help our efforts to give the gift of human freedom through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way. Love as your guide. And liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It is the Sunday Night Edition. You can give us a call, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. This is the show about your calls. But first, um, Mark. My Magic Mud. It is a it's, it's a tooth uh, mouth cleaner. And what it does is, is it whitens teeth and it gets your mouth clean in a way that I have never experienced before. When I use My Magic Mud, I don't wake up the next day with that kind of film on my teeth. It feels like I just finished brushing them the next morning. Now, it doesn't taste like I just finished brushing them the next morning. <laughs> it does, however, feel that way. And it's amazing stuff. I'm not going to ever do without My Magic Mud because I think it's a, uh, it, it, it's a great product. 
and I'll use it for the rest of my life, whether they continue advertising on Free Talk Live or not. Let it, me ask you, Mark, do you have samples of this stuff? Because I've wanted I to do, try this stuff for the, a while. Okay, so I'm sorry. I have it at the in um, at my house in a box that I was supposed to bring the last couple of days. So I would normally be handing <laughs> you right now your own little tub of uh, my magic mud, and they're and they're actually increasing the amounts going in the tubs now. And nice. it's uh, oh, it's cool. black as midnight, and it's a tooth powder, and you just you do use it for two minutes. Right. And you'll see you, an immediate do difference. Do you use a brush the, with it or do you use your finger? Or no, you use a brush with brush. it. Okay, right. I use uh, my Sonic Care toothbrush thing. Right, okay. And in two minutes, you'll see an immediate difference in the way your teeth look. Right. You'll, though, I don't, uh, whitening isn't exactly the right word. Stain removing is probably the best right. thing. You don't even know you've got stains on your teeth. You don't look at them that much. You're just kind of, you know. Little... I do. I've used the, you know, like the crest white strips in the mm -hmm. past, you know. This doesn't have any of the chemicals in it. Right. And um, that's really what sort of separates it. You can swallow this stuff. Right. And it's fine. There's no right. big deal. So mymagicmud.com, I take, a, I recommend it. Take a listen to biological dentist Dr. Griffin Cole's explanation about the benefits of mymagicmud at mymagicmud.com. Don't take my word for it, even though I've had an awesome experience. Take the dentist's word for it, mymagicmud.com. So we've been talking about a lot of stuff here, but one of the things that we briefly touched upon and mentioned was uh, Herman Cain, because somebody was bringing up about the the the. Um, results of libertarian, uh, what could possibly happen with a libertarian election, and uh, mentioned the guy in where? Where is it? The, the it's just some libertarian pizza guy running. I think it's North or South Carolina. North or South Carolina, and so I kind of joked about Herman Cain because he was running, uh, and he obviously owns Godfather Pizza. So we've got Chris calling in from the police state of Connecticut. Chris, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's you me. wanted to talk to us a little bit about Herman, Herman Cain as the uh, chairman of the Federal Reserve, or not the chairman of the Federal Reserve, but he was like a chief in some state, right? St. Louis. St. Louis? Well, yes, good evening, lady and gentlemen. I was going to go off on a typical anti-Federal Reserve rant, as I usually do. All right, I have only several vices, but hitting the Fed is definitely one of them. Um, and yes, Herman Cain, you had mentioned, so I figured I'd say it. Um, I think, like, back in the last presidential primary for the Republicans, you know, Herman Cain was popular for a while, and they always mentioned him as a uh, pizza guy, basically, for like 20 times to every one time they would mention that he was right. former head of the Kansas City Fed because the Fed is so unpopular and they couldn't tarnish him with that. <sighs> that was a long breath. Um, and <laughs> it kind of shows that we have the Fed up on the ropes. Uh, Obsessive Fed haters like myself want to see some kind of fair and honest money, if at all, in this in this country. And a, another indicator of that is that Federal Reserve uh, boot camp that I had talked about last week that I see is now up on your website, freetalklight.com, or freetalklight.com. So I'm happy to see it up there, where That's the awesome. Fed is now trying to indoctrinate little children into thinking that they're good people. Yeah, right. <laughs> So let me ask you. So it shows that we have them up on the ropes, and if we keep buying Bitcoin and Litecoin instead of that Dogecoin crap, we'll, uh, we'll keep them. Yeah. Hey, hey, there's nothing wrong with Dogecoin. <laughs> so hurt, very sad. Come on. Well, you know, people can Litecoin go. Litecoin is way better, people. Go get go to Expresscoin. You can get all of them. But uh, let me ask you this. So just a side note question. I don't, did you hear when we were talking at the beginning of the show from, from the, your police state, this new uh, sugar tax? Uh, yeah, and of all the things to, <laughs> I'm not trying to be a, a jerk, I just, I, I don't think it's worth talking about. <laughs> it just about. comes natural. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think, I mean, I, I don't know, are, is there any activism it's to be very had there? It's typical in of the people in my state, put that way. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I'm aware. I, I used to live there myself a couple of years ago before I made the move here to Keene. Uh, I lived over in the uh, Fairfield County area. And, uh, I grew up around stores, Connecticut. Yep. So you're like towards the middle. I just I left. I was right next to Sandy Hook, essentially, and you know that's that's fun ah. too. I've got friends from the area who, uh, you know, would go to firearms and you know go to ranges in the area, and uh, well, that's kind of stopped for the most part because there's not a whole lot you can do. I mean, it's it just it's just getting more and more restrictive, and you can't travel to you know if you're in New York or if you're in Massachusetts or if you're in any of the states that are bordering Connecticut, the, the restrictions are Well, that's why are so I joined the free, free State Project two days ago, as I was intending on doing for years anyway, and I'll be getting out as soon as I, you know, can buy some land and safely and efficiently live in New Hampshire. Well, that's right. Much. You're the 48-second video, right? You're... 
<laughs> this video that just got forty eight second video. Are you the, how no, somebody not. posted a video to YouTube, I believe, of Mark, uh, how to get someone to sign up for the Free State Project in forty eight oh, nice. seconds, and I believe that's your well, your video. This happened on Thursday. I have been drinking, so it's looking too much credit. <laughs> hey, the best things happen when you drink, right? <laughs> Maybe. I'm not sure that attention. always works. <laughs> Well, Chris, do you have any final anyway, thoughts guys, for us? I'll let somebody else talk. I'll yield the rest of my time. Okay, you guys, thank uh, you so much, Chris. Thank you. thank you for the call. Bye. Have a great night. So, yeah, Connecticut uh, cesspool of, of bureaucracy. It's just awful. I mean, I- I'm very, very glad to get out of there. And every time I go back and visit, actually, and I'll just admit this on air, I've got this sort of like unhandled registration, vehicle registration situation <laughs> and like vehicle tax situation there. So every time I go back to Connecticut, I'm kind of one, I'm always find myself wondering, I hope I don't have a warrant out for my arrest because I know that my vehicle registration permissions have been suspended and I just never took care of it. You really should take care of that because yeah. otherwise, otherwise something's going to come and bite you in the butt. Eventually, but I've already like I've got everything all handled in New Hampshire, so it's like all already taken care of. Like I've moved on. The timing was just perfect where I guess they were going to be handling that, but I registered my vehicle just before that would have been a problem. Mm. So I kind of feel like, well, maybe I beat the system there and it's all done for but i, I hope so i definitely know that there's probably some taxes that i need to take care of and say hey you know i haven't been living in your state for a while and that needs to go away um but i'm just hoping that there isn't something else with registration plates and all that stuff i need to just take care of it and i've got the paperwork lying around somewhere but they haven't been bugging me about it for like a year and a half so uh, they probably just figured it but again it's, it's, like, it's just one of those things every time i go back to visit the state i feel considerably less free because you know i'm always wondering what all does out there i always feel that way when i go to florida too you know there's some kind of random car stop there and you know i, I just don't feel like taking the activism into hand and say right uh, exactly what's your probable cause do you have clear articulable um suspicion for stopping me no this is just some random stop of every but i guess i won't show you my license right. you know like i just i i would like to take that stand and probably would take that stand in new hampshire but down in florida i don't need that trouble i don't know i i'm still not very much of a fan of taking stands against the tickets i like to talk my way out of them whenever possible in fact i was pulled over the last time i was here on the show on my way home um and uh, you know i just try the approach of just being deferential and friendly and respectful to the officer and i don't incriminate myself and i you and your white privilege ask for, yeah exactly <laughs> and i ask for my way out of the ticket and try to you know be like a pally pal with the cop and take advantage of my white privilege and try and talk my way out of the ticket and it normally works almost every single time so you know that's i just prefer to not deal with the state at all if i have to and that seems to be the easiest way to get that done and i don't want to spend a day in court fighting it and i will if i get a ticket i certainly will go fight it and make it as much of a hassle for them as possible and drag it through the mud but i don't want to do it if i don't have to i don't know how you guys feel about that yeah well i've uh, i threatened on my last uh, speeding ticket to you know go to jail for it fortunately they let me do community service which i then did announcing at uh, the porcupine freedom festival for well, if you have any thoughts about tickets, if you have any thoughts about singing at Auschwitz, if you have any thoughts about pizza guys, <laughs> or, you know, if you are a pizza or guy. Or Doge. Or Doge coins or sugar taxes or any of that, you can give us a call. Uh, this is Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Again, this is the Sunday night edition of Free Talk Live. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Question. 
Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terraganics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone. 213 213- 493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. It is the final segment of the third hour, but we still have some time for your calls if you want to make them. That's 855-450-FREE. That is 855-450-3733. If you want to call about and talk to us about whatever you want to talk about. Uh, Mark, I'm just going to do this right on air. Do you have anything else to talk to us about tonight in terms of, you know, those people that, you know, pay the bills and whatnot? No, there are no live reads, no. Okay, well, you know what? Then let's talk about the other people that help pay the bills around here. Uh if you want to help uh, Free Talk Live and you like what you're hearing, you want to get this into more people's ears, you can go to amp.freetalklive.com. That stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. Uh, we're asking $5 a month to help spread Free Talk Live and LRN.FM. So if you like people hearing Liberty content on the radio and you want to hear people, uh, you know, you want other people to hear this, uh, that is the best way to do it. Um, and, you know, it, it's unlike those other radio show hosts it's not it's not a charge there are some perks to being an amplifier there's like an advertise uh like a less fewer advertisement uh podcast feed i think i don't know mark what is there's there's no recorded ads in the amp uh, podcast it's like an amp only forum there's like a facebook group that you get some access yeah it's nice pretty pretty much the forum these days i mean it's pretty much just a few perks that are like you can talk with the other people who are really into free talk live and it's you know that's a nice little nice little benefit so uh, if you want to help get that into more people's ears, amp.freetalklive.com. Um, you know what? 
I'm just going to go to this call just completely. I have no idea who this is or what they want to talk about, but they've been Ooh. holding for like 13 minutes, so let's find out. Caller, are you there? I am. Who is this? Where are you calling you from? From Santa Monica, California. And what's your name? Dave. Dave from Santa Monica. What do you want to talk to us about? Hey, uh, you know, Mark, it's pretty interesting that you don't like going down to Florida because you were convicted of murder down there. I was convicted of murder down there. Yep. Yeah, you're a convicted murderer, and it's really great that, you know, you get to promote all these things and all this kind of stuff, but the guy that you murdered, he's still dead. And well, I didn't murder anybody. Of that guy. I didn't kill anybody, Dave. Um, you've called in on this several times, and here's what I want to know, Dave. Um, this must be bothering you. There must be something you want. What can I Did do I for you? No, I don't want anything. Well, then why do you call? Because I think that you should be reminded. Actually, I would like to call almost every day. I think you should be reminded every single day that you're a murderer. And I am, uh, except for he didn't uh, murder anybody. So well, I didn't kill anybody, saying? Dave. Oh, and you don't oh, seem wait, to. You oh, don't. Wait, how wait, come, wait, Dave? You. We've had this discussion. So you're going to take, take the word of a murderer who said he didn't murder someone. Well, Dave, there there are three <laughs> people in a hotel room. And two of them are dead. You, the only yeah. word you can take at this point is mine. Um, you can decide whatever except, you want, but you're deciding the fact based that on. You changed your story several times, right? Well, uh, I was in prison. Would you go in with the story I didn't do it, or would you go in with the story? Yeah, I'm a. You're, you weigh 125 pounds. Oh, I, I, I thought I read that uh, the reason they picked you up is because you'd been bragging about the fact that you were the one that strangled them. Well, but that's the newspaper, and there are certainly oh. some people. Well, so we're supposed to believe somebody's a convicted murderer well, or a reporter. Do you believe everything you read in the papers, Dave? Nope, but I don't believe you either. D don't when believe you me. You were involved in his murder, Dave. How can I make you whole on this one? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to do for you, man. It's all about making me whole. It's all about making you whole. I remember I called you the first thing I asked you before I even mentioned the murder. I asked you, do you believe in uh, in uh, reparations for crimes? And you said you do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, you've done nothing for any reparations for your crimes. That's not true. I've done everything that's been asked of me. No, you did. What did you do for the family? Everything that has been asked for me. The family was uh, involved in whatever oh, sentencing that's, was. That's the beauty. That's the beauty of someone who's such a freaking hypocrite. Because you say, oh, I did everything that they asked of me. What do you yeah, want me I to do? Believe, what I believe is in personal recognizance, or personal, not recognizance, but personal reparations for things. But I did everything that they asked of me. So you can't blame me. Just because I was holding someone down when someone Are else you was just grasping at straws? Well, he, what do you expect them to ask of him? He's already said what do he wants. He's already said he disagrees <laughs> with me politically, dude. Yeah. And this is no, just really? his yeah, way just of smearing me. I mean, it really is obvious. Disagree with you politically. What's that? When did I say I disagree with you politically? When you were on the air, you said you disagreed with me on about 40% of the issues. What did you expect the family oh, to ask him? 40%, but I agree with you maybe on 60%. What well, did you expect the family Every Democrat and Republican can do that, dude. Yeah, well, but you just said I disagree with you on the issues, but I agree with you on probably 50 percent What did issues. you expect so the family to ask of him? Falsehood. What did you expect the family to ask of him? I didn't expect the family to ask anything of him. So but then I he's done him. everything that the family has asked from him. Thank him. you for the call. At some point, you just got to move <laughs> on and leave the past in the past. I mean, thanks for the call there, but you're repetitive and obnoxious. He's done <laughs> everything that the family has asked of him. And you're like, well, you're a hypocrite because of that. Meh, meh. I don't know. I mean, it's just like, what are you talking about? Well, Dave represents a certain amount of people out there that sure. are upset. Yeah. Sure, yeah. And I don't know what to do about it. Right. Like, here's my options. My options are because what Dave wants me to do is shut up. Yeah, that's of what he ultimately. That's where it comes You're from. You're supposed to be because Dave wouldn't all the time, forever and ever. Because he wouldn't. He wouldn't have had a problem if he never heard me on the radio, right? Right. So essentially, I wonder if he does the same thing when cops kill people's families. Well, no, he's never going to. No, of give course not. An opportunity to uh, to have that um, that conversation, but you know, like my choices are to continue to live my life and do the best job I can. To be um, to live a life that makes the world a better place, or to kill myself. 
Those are my choices. And I don't think that's going to help my wife and my kid or anybody else in any way, shape, or form. Right. It's just going to make people who are angry that I disagree with them on some political issue or another feel better. Yes! I mean, the, the, the vitriolic, retributive uh, voice out there in the, in the world, it might make them feel better, but it's not going to make the world a better place. Right. Well, we he doesn't can... like that I talk about morality and have had a and have had moral slips in my life. Well, here's the surprise: everybody has. Right. So we have another call on the line who wants to talk about Dave in Santa Monica. We've got oh. St- Steve calling in from uh, St. George, Utah. Steve, are you on the line? Yeah. Hey, uh, the first time I ever heard this Dave guy from wherever he calls from because he gives a different city each time. He sometimes switches his name he, up too. Uh, yeah, he was beating on Mark for that, and uh, that's the first time I ever heard Mark uh, talk about that. And I heard Mark say at that point that he did whatever was asked of him, and the, the people wanted him to go to jail, and that's what he ended up doing. I had never thought of that before, that people want somebody to go to jail, and that is a form of reparation. I don't know how he can't get that. Yeah, Exactly. Well, I wish that the family had um, other options at the time. I think that uh, like justice could have better been served. But the problem is, is that with the way that the the this antagonistic legal system works, you never really get a chance at the truth. And I told lies. There's no doubt about it. My 17 year old ass tried to lie my way out of it, and nobody was going to believe me at that point. And so it looked worse than what had sort of happened. And it's ridiculous to think here that 70 years later that you'd be the same person. 70? <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> the old guy on the show. Uh, and also- and also, the uh, judicial system has done its sh- fair share of problems, too. You know, I've, I've had to turn its ugly eyes on me and accuse me of things were just insanely stupid. And I was the culprit, but what they said was their, their alleged crime was just insanely stupid. It wasn't even close. I mean, I, I uh, was risked a second-degree uh, felony. For just taking a bond over to jail. How stupid. I mean, taking a bond? Flat out stupid. Yeah. Just bailing somebody out? Yeah. And they were saying I was impersonating a bail bondsman because I wrote the, my own bond. Wow. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> wow. Oh, I know. None of it makes sense. I mean, this is a, this is a municipal mafia. And municipal doesn't just mean city. It, it traditionally means country. And we just got a mafia running the place. Yeah. You know, they got their thugs and goons running around beating on people. And and we got morons calling in and saying, hey, you didn't pay your debt to society. Well, who is the society that you're pretending that I owe a debt to? Yeah, I totally agree with you, Steve. Unfortunately, we do have to run. It is, we're coming up here on the end of the show, but I want to thank you for the call tonight and for your thoughts. Do you have any, like, two seconds, final thoughts here before we go? Uh, thank you for letting me on. All right. Thank you so much for the call, Steve. And this has been the Sunday night edition of Free Talk Live. It has been Johnson here with you. With Danica. And Mark. And if you want to call, you have to do it tomorrow night. Uh, you know, in the meantime, check out freetalklive.com. Check out the archives. Check out our YouTube channel. Check out the promote page you want to promote us. AMP. All that good stuff. Go to shop.freetalklive. And this is it for the night. We'll see you all tomorrow. Good night. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure.